Ladies and gentlemen, according to the proposal of the ASEAN Secretariat through the ASEAN office in Vietnam, as the focal points of the coastal management of Vietnam, VASI and the Indonesia's ASEAN research centers and Norwegians, as you know, as well as uh, Danang Dondre, we are organizing this local stakeholder workshop to reduce plastic pollutions, which is this issue that we're dealing today. Joining our workshop today, I'd like to welcome Mr. Mokten Hulus, ASEAN ambassador in the online platform. It's great day. Loshan, Ambassador of Norway to Vietnam and Laos. Dr. Torsen Larsen, Deputy Director of Norwegian's Water Research Institute in the platform. Dr. Aris Mann, Director of the ASEAN Research Center online platform. We have the uh, Representative, representative of the ASEAN Secretariat on the online platform. Mr. Vo Ong Nguyen Chung, Deputy Director of Da Nang Don Re, Department of Natural Resources and Environment, as well as leaders of other agencies under the Don Re. We'd like to welcome representative of the international organization UNDP, WWF, NPAP, as well as uh, representatives of universities, and uh, NGOs, uh, plastics organizations in Da Nang who participate with us, and leaders and officials of the VASI under the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. First of all, let me be through with the agenda today. First of all, we have the opening speech of the Norwegian ambassador coming up with the deputy director of VASI and the Norwegian Water Research Institute. Coming up next, we have the introductions about the, the Norwegian water research cities and the Indonesian ASEAN research centers. And then we've divided into two parts. The first part will be in the policies and the program of plastic reduction in Da Nang and is the impacts of plastic pollution. The second part, we'll listen to reports from partners that are implementing and their future plans in Da Nang. This, we have a lot of reports. I think the program today is rather long, so I hope that the reporters, you will have representatives, you'll keep your time. And then I have the opening speech from the uh, Norwegian ambassadors and the deputy director of VASI. So, I'd like to invite Ms. Krete Loshan, Norwegian ambassador of, to uh, Vietnam, to have her opening speech, please. The floor is yours, ma'am. Deputy Director General of VASI, Mr. Lam. Deputy Director of the Department of Natural Resources and Environment in Da Nang, Mr. Chuang. Deputy, G Deputy DG of NIVA, Mr. Tuibion Lashan. Executive Director of Center for Southeast Asian Studies, Mr. Arisman. And my good colleague, the Norwegian Ambassador to ASEAN, Mr. Morten Hoagland. Participants, guests, online and present here today. Sin Chao, good afternoon and good morning. Good morn from, for those in Oslo. Thank you for inviting me to this workshop in Da Nang 
and the kickoff of the Norwegian-funded ASEANO project in Vietnam, an important part of Norway's cooperation with ASEAN as a sector dialogue partner. This is a great opportunity to focus on plastic pollution and marine littering, a national, regional and global challenge. In short, we need to join forces to ensure a sustainable ocean economy. If we do not act now, there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans by 2050. Ocean sustainability is among the top priorities of Norway. International action is key to addressing the most significant sources of marine plastics. Marine litter is one of the fastest growing environmental concerns. An estimated 15 tons of litter enter our oceans every minute. It is estimated that more than 80% of ocean plastics come from land-based sources with Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam among the top contributors. Norway and Vietnam as ocean no nations understand better than anyone else the importance of our oceans to our economies. This year, we are celebrating 50 years of diplomatic relations. Let's make our joint efforts for a sustainable ocean economy as part of our celebrations. Oceans are set as a high priority in the international cooperation agenda of the Norwegian government. We are actively raising the issue in the UN and other global and regional conventions and platforms. It is a key pillar in our cooperation with ASEAN. Further, Norway has launched a, approximately US dollar 180 million development aid program to combat marine litter globally, including our support to ASEAN member states, such as the ASEANO project. Vietnam is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and has successfully been able to control the COVID-19 pandemic through early and decisive measures. But the rate of waste generation growth is expected to be even faster than the GDP with the changing lifestyles and rapid urbanization. Vietnam has already the world's fourth largest release of plastic waste to the ocean. 70% of Vietnam's population lives close to the 3,400 kilometer long coastline and low-lying deltas. Mismanaged plastic waste has a high potential to end up in rivers and the sea as marine litter and ultimately as microplastics. Today, more than 80% of Vietnam's household waste is landfilled, dumped or burnt in open fires. As you all understand, Sustainable and inclusive waste management is key to combat marine littering. There is a strong political commitment by the Vietnamese government to tackle the issue of waste management and marine plastics. I know the local authorities in Da Nang and the city's people committee are committed to sustainable and environmental friendly development and wants to become a green city by 2025. That's why I'm particularly pleased to see the launch of the ASEANO project in Vietnam happening in Da Nang. The main goal of the ASEANO project is to build capacity to tackle plastic pollution from key sources in the ASEAN, in the ASEAN region through improved knowledge on sources, releases, transport and fate of plastic pollution. ASEANO will focus on local municipality city-level sustainability and a set of sound and feasible measures to reduce plastic pollution from key sectors. I have learned that ASEANO is progressing well with many activities currently completed or under implementation, both at the regional level and in the two first pilot studied study sites in Indonesia and the Philippines. However, the measures and restrictions in response to the COVID-19 pandemic has led to some alterations and delays. Now, we are all hopeful that ASEANO will get a good start in Vietnam in 2021. 
We hope today to establish close working relationships between ASEANO project partners and Vietnamese institutions in order to build capacity and develop knowledge-based measures to combat plastic pollution. The stakeholder workshop today is an important stepping stone toward building collaboration, establishing networks and identifying key priorities for ASEANO in Vietnam, as well as identifying, supporting and complementing the ongoing efforts in Da Nang. I wish you all a very successful workshop and let's work together to have more fish than plastic in the ocean by 2050. Sin Coman, thank you. Thank you. Currently, the Norwegian embassy is having close cooperation with the VASI, and we're having concrete success. So, thank you for your cooperation in Vietnam in this agenda. And now, I'd like to invite Mr. Nguyen Quy Lâm, the Deputy Director of Vietnam Administrations of Sea and Silent, to come on stage and have his opening speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Morten Hogland, Ambassador of Norway, Ms. Greta Loshan, Ambassador of Norway in Vietnam and Laos. Dr. Torsen Larsen, Deputy Director of the Norwegian Institute for Water Study, NI. Mr. Rismann, Executive Director, Center for Southeast Asian Studies. Mr. Vong Wen Chung, Deputy Director of Department of Natural Resources and Environment. Representative of International Co Organization and all of you delegates. In her presentation, Ms. President has stated plastic and marine plastic in particular is a challenge for countries in the world. The target of increasing the contributions of marine economy to 65% of GDP, Vietnam in the previous time has developed many strategies that focused on the management and reduce reductions of plastic waste as well as national action plan to 2030 with the targets that we will reduce plastic debris by 50% and 75% in 2030. To perform this objective, so the Vasi and the Mondre, as a focal point, we would love to have supports of organizations in and out of the country to finalize and complete the constitutions that could determine and we could uh, finish the monitoring system to investigate and assess the scope of pollutions. We would also hope to uh, develop the international centers on marine plastic research. Currently, the VASI and other international partners, such as the WWF, Asian Development Bank, United Nations Development Programs, UNDP, and the Partnership National Action Activities, NPAP, to implement activities effectively to avoid duplications. Vietnam actively cooperates with a working group of marine coastal environment experts to develop and complete the ASEAN Plastic Debris Action Plan, and we're completing procedures with all countries in the regions. We, VASI, are also in the process of considering participations in developing a global agreement on marine plastic debris. In the workshop today, with the attendance of all the authorities and institution experts, 
especially with the participations of Mr. Ambassadors in of Norwegian to ASEAN and Norwegian Ambassador to Vietnam. I would hope that this is a good opportunity to collect all the information that we could build the proposals to commit of our contribution to the Vietnamese government as well as the Da Nang government to reduce marine plastic and to pro protect the beauty of the nature in this area so that we could all foster the marine economy development. Finally, last but not least, thank you the ambassadors of Norway to ASEAN and to Vietnam. I'd like to thank the CSEAS, the NIVA, as well as Da Nang Don Re, to support us to organize the workshop today. Finally, thank you and wish you all the happiness and success. May the workshop be happy and successful. Thank you, Deputy Director. Deputy Director is actually the head of the a coastal management action work group. He's uh, very passionate in helping us and to support the national uh, the, the ASEAN action plan on Mer on debris action plan. And now I'm I'd like to invite Dr. Thornton Larsen of the Norwegian Institute of Water Research. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. Here, Ambassador Löken, Ambassador Höglund, Director General Mr. Lam, and Director, Deputy Director Mr. Chong, Dr. Arisman, dear new and old friends and colleagues. It's my honor as representative of NIVA, the Norwegian Institute for Water Research, to finally be able to take part in this workshop in collaboration with Vietnam. We have been waiting for having this occasion for a long time, and this event has been delayed for about one year due to the pandemic. And I have to say it's fantastic to see, see you on, on video together in the meeting room without wearing face masks. Uh, it's something we almost have forgotten that this uh, is possible. So it's, it's great to see the, the progress you have made and the, and the situation. I would, of course, uh, very much have liked to be present in Da Nang in person today, uh, but when that was not possible, this way of meeting is a good second option. We have all gained experience, a lot of experience in meeting over video the last year. Today, uh, we're having a, a workshop as part of the ASEANO project uh, and the kickoff of the project's collaboration with Vietnam. ASEANO is short for the ASEAN Norway Cooperation Project on Local Capacity Building for Reducing Plastic Pollution in the ASEAN Region. In this ASEAN-wide project, we carry out work related to plastic waste and plastic pollution in several countries with the goal of contributing to find solution to this fast-growing global problem. And now we are starting up the project work in Vietnam. The project is funded by the Norwegian government, led by NIVA in close cooperation with the Center for Southeast Asian Studies, CCs, who host of this workshop. NIVA is an independent research institute with leading expertise on marine and fresh waters and related environmental issues. We are now close to 500 employees working on a wide array of environmental climate and resource related issues. And in recent years, NIVA has built a strong team on plastic pollution, covering everything from monitoring methods to global governance, from people's perception of local pollution to how waste pickers have been impacted by the pandemic. All issues important for solving the plastic pollution, pollution challenges and all issues covered by the ASEANO project. The project covers different geographical scales, and we believe in learning throughout the ASEAN region and beyond. The ASEAN region is a major contributor to plastic waste to the oceans, and hence must be a key part of the solution. The ASEAN region is, of course, big and diverse. The differences across the region may require different solutions in different countries, but there are also a lot of experiences and learning that are relevant across countries and regions. 
While the regional and national levels can provide policy and regulation, guidance and incentives, the day-to-day -day action towards solutions are at the local level. And therefore, at the core of the ASEANO project are local example cases where experiences are gained and options for solutions can be tested. We believe it is necessary to get involved with local governments, local businesses and people to find solutions to the plastic pollution problem that are sustainable for the local communities. When we are starting our project activities in FRS, in this context, a new country and a new city, we are of course not coming with a fixed solution. We know that every country and every city have its specific challenges and hence need to find solutions that fit the local situation. There are, however, challenges, uh, sorry, there are, however, knowledge and experience from elsewhere that can be very useful when developing local solutions. The ASEANO project started in 2019, and since then, the project has worked in pilot catchments in Indonesia and the Philippines. In each pilot catchment, strong networks and close interactions with key stakeholders, such as industries, businesses, government bodies, NGOs, and other projects have been established through consultation meetings and workshops. These partnerships are essential for ensuring the relevance and success of the project. The project contains four main pillars. One is working with key industry sectors to find suitable measures to reduce plastic pollution. We focus mostly on small and medium sized enterprises, given this sector's importance in the ASEAN region and their role in the plastic value chain. Another project pillar is environmental monitoring methods and related capacity building. Here we focus on both macro and microplastics. Much of the work is based on training and training of trainers in the field. The pandemic has forced us to temporarily to move to training on digital platforms. This has actually been quite successful and we have been reaching a wide audience. Yet another project pillar focus on understanding socioeconomic drivers to uh, and impacts of plastic pollutions. Here, we involve with local stakeholders and societies to identify suitable measures. And finally, there is an important education and dissemination component. Here, we reach out more broadly <coughs> across the region to a range of audiences, ranging from ministries via companies to university students. We're very much looking forward to get started with our collaboration with Vietnam and Da Nang, and I'm grateful to everyone taking part in this workshop. I want to thank our collaborating partners in Vietnam for making this workshop possible, including the Vietnam Administration of Seas and Islands, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, uh, and also the Department of Natural Resources and Environment in Da Nang City. So I'm looking very much forward to an interesting day, and I wish you all a good workshop. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Tarzan Lazen. Now, before, before we move on to the upcoming speech, let us come with the ASEAN introduction by Dr. Marianne of the Norwegian Institute of Water Research and Dr. Iris Mann, please. Yes. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Dear yeah, Ambassador Löken, Ambassador Höglund, dear Deputy Director Mr. Nguyen Kullan, and dear colleagues and friends, I am very pleased to be at this workshop, although in a virtual format. And we are also very happy to start up ASEANI activities in Vietnam. And now, together with Dr. Arisman, the Director of CCS, we will provide a brief overview of the ASEANI project. And I will just quickly first introduce the Norwegian Institute for Water Research that Horian has already uh, mentioned. So if you want to uh, change to the next slide, please. Uh, so NIVA, uh, the Norwegian Institute for Water Research, is Norway's leading environmental water research institute. 
It was established more than 60 years ago uh, by the Research Council of Norway, and it was established to improve the environmental status of water bodies after the period that followed after the Second World War. And the NIVA group consists of um, the NIVA foundations and several different subsidiaries. In national and international, we have offices in different parts of Norway, as well as in Copenhagen, Denmark, Chile and China. And uh, as Torian mentioned, the NIVA group has now, it appears, almost 500 employees <laughs> and a gross revenue of about 60 million US dollars. And NIVA performs research and tries to find solutions to the most pressing environmental challenges that we face today. Uh, next slide, please. And what's already been mentioned as well is that NIVA has a specific expertise on plastic pollution. It's a major hub in Norway and uh, perhaps Europe for plastic pollution research. And we have almost more than 50 projects uh, that are ongoing uh, or have been carried out on this issue. We have more than 30 researchers that work on these issues. And we have expertise both on the environmental methods, how to monitoring the environment for plastic pollution, both on macro and micro discharges, how to actually produce uh, material for standard references, and how to model how plastics move from source to face, and where the plastic comes from. We also have expertise on the socioeconomic drivers of impact. This includes governance and policy, human practices and behavior, and the circular economy and EPR is coming up as an important part of the solution for this problem, as well as the, as the role of the informal sector. NIVA also performs degradation tests for industry and water treatment technologies. Uh, next. Uh, next slide, please. Um, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> Uh, and as the next slide will show, NIVA has uh, uh, the ASEAN or NIVA team is a combination of experts, both from the social science field, uh, such as uh, waste management, but also from the environmental monitoring and reviewing processes. So we have a good combination of uh, experts uh, that work together. Um, and as uh, we're partnering with the Center for Southeast Asian Studies, with Director Arisman and his team. Uh, and um, the Center for <laughs> Southeast Asian Studies is a regional research center based in Jakarta with a specific focus and knowledge on Southeast Asia. And the center provides uh, research conferences, workshop trainings, and seminars. And it also welcomes scholars that want to um, visit and research Southeast Asia in Indonesia and collaborates with other Southeast Asian institutions worldwide. Uh, next slide, please. Just briefly on how the ASEAN project is set up. It is, as has already been mentioned, funded by the Norwegian Development Program to com Combat Marine Litter and Microplastics. Uh, it runs from 19, 2019 to the end of 2022, and is administered by the Norwegian Embassy in Jakarta. Uh, ASEAN is also endorsed by and reports to the ASEAN sector sectoral body, ASEAN Working Group on Coastal and Marine Environment. And although it's led by NIVA, it's uh, also co-managed by the CCs, who is responsible for the activities in the ASEAN region. And we also have <coughs> PEMC that coordinates the activities in uh, the Philippines, the Philippine case. Uh, yes, next slide, please. Yes, so I think we all start to get familiar with these graphs and images. Um, we know that plastics can be found pretty much everywhere in the world. And marine uh, litter and plastic pollution have become global environmental problems, but their impacts on wildlife, ecosystem, human health, and uh, national and local economies and livelihoods occur in specific places all around the world. 
And uh, what's already been mentioned as well is that the five East Asian countries account for more than half of the total plastic waste that we found in the oceans. And except for China, all these other four belong to the ASEAN region. And perhaps not surprising since the ASEAN countries have experienced a rapid industrialization during the past decades, followed by economic growth and an improved quality of life, which has allowed a different kind of lifestyle. Uh, but perhaps also the, this lifestyle has not been accompanied yet by the development of waste management that can deal with this material production. And while now uh, plastic um, pollution and marine litter is high on most of the ASEAN countries' agenda and also the ASEAN itself, the problem is complex and solutions must be devised at multiple levels, the international, regional, national, as well as the local one. And this complexity is also compounded by a lack of knowledge. There's little historical data on plastic pollution. There's little baseline data for how to monitoring plastics in the environment. And it's not included in regular environmental monitoring product, projects. Um, having more knowledge about plastics and how different aspects about plastic pollution interact and play out in specific catchments and socioeconomic context will help to devise better and more sustainable solutions to mitigate this problem. Uh, next, please. And there is a lot of policy development and commitment to combat marine plastic pollution at the ASEAN level through the Bangkok, Le Bangkok Declaration and Framework of Action uh, in 2019. And there are uh, probably one report about this issue released every day. So there's a lot of activity. There's also a lot of projects that we know <laughs> exist both in the catchment that we work with and also in Vietnam. And the key objective of ASEANO is that we want to work with these projects and with key stakeholders to create synergies uh, and with existing initiatives. Uh, next, please. Um, and uh, ASEANO takes a catchment approach to these problems uh, and considers interactions between ecological and social dimensions within the watershed. And we try to adapt the methods approaches to these specific contexts and focus on the needs of local stakeholders and try to build on the competence of local partners and to create uh, good uh, um, capacity building projects and also to develop device solutions. And the idea is that the transfer of knowledge from these existing case studies in Sitarum, Indonesia, Imus River, the Philippines, and Da Nang province, Vietnam, can be to the benefit of other places in ASEAN and beyond ASEAN. Next, please. Um, and as already has been mentioned, ASEAN's main goal is to build capacity to tackle plastic pollution from key sources in the ASEAN region through improved knowledge of what kind of plastics that are linked to the environment, how plastics are transported and distributed, and what can be done to manage and prevent plastics from reaching the environment. And it's built on four interrelated pillars, uh, reduction measures for key industry sectors, monitoring measures and capacity building, socioeconomic drivers impacts and reduction measures, as well as education and dissemination. Next, please. Yes. And when we talk about reduction measures for key industry sectors, we have focused mainly on micro, small and medium scale enterprises, given their importance uh, for the economy and as a source of employment livelihood for a majority of ASEAN people. Uh, we have in the existing uh, uh, case studies to seek to engage industrial sectors, business association enterprises to devise solutions and to assess opportunities and challenges to reduce uh, reuse and recycle plastics for different sectors. We will also examine the best available techniques and the best available environmental practices for what kind of measures that can be devised to combat this solution. And the project will also develop sectorial roadmaps and guidelines to prevent and mitigate plastic use and release from key industrial sectors. Next, please. Um, 
monitoring methods and capacity. Here, the goals are also to collect a baseline data for riverine abundance and transport of marine litter, establish a suite of standard methods for monitoring that are adapted to the local catchments. As you can see on the picture here, this is a visual monitoring method and to conduct monitoring campaigns in pilot catchment. And together with partners, build local capacity on monitoring and to develop protocol guidelines and training programs and so forth. Uh, and in the end, we want to quantify the fluxes of plastic waste from river to the sea. Next, please. Um, also with the socioeconomic drivers impacts on reduction measures. Here, the focus is on assessing existing governance and management structures for plastic waste to provide recommendations to how these uh, management measures may be improved and how policy can be strengthened. And to examine how uh, plastic policy may, in, may have implications for more vulnerable livelihoods that may depend on certain kind of plastics. And also to identify what kind of plastic consumption and waste disposal habits that exist in households and thereby also look at the role of culture and context in how people perceive and practice plastics, both in terms of consumption and waste disposal. And the main goal here, as well as everywhere else, is to build a collaboration and capacity to assess the socioeconomic drivers, impacts and reduction measures with the, between the project partners. Uh, and next, please. And an important part of ASEANO is also the education and dissemination component. And here, as Torian mentioned, we have moved largely online uh, and been quite active. We have already held uh, uh, workshops and training sessions on microplastics um, analysis. Um, We've had a research uh, grant competition of ASEAN students. One of the winners was from Vietnam. And this coming week, we will also have uh, regional training on both environmental governance and on circular economy with the collaboration between project partners in different countries. So if you're interested, you may uh, join those sessions. And now I leave it for, for uh, Director Asman to continue the presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Marian Carson. Uh, I just want to add a bit. Uh, uh, you already present by Dr. Tojan and Marian Carson. Uh, actually, Indonesia uh, choose Citarum River. Uh, our project, ASEANO, focus on the river monitoring because we believe uh, the transfer from the plastic waste from the river to the ocean. So that's why we choose Citarum River is one of the polluted river in Indonesia after consult with our Ministry of Environment, Republic of Indonesia. Uh, we now is an ongoing activities. Uh, even today, uh, we collaborate with uh, LIPI, uh, Indonesian Institute and local university, doing uh, monitoring in the river. If you look at this picture, this is uh, today still happen, the sampling monitoring. And next slide, please, Ratna. Uh, also, uh, we choose this location, uh, these two cities in the upstream and downstream of Citarum, Bandung and Bekasi. Uh, we work closely with the local government uh, in Bandung and Bekasi. Hope in Vietnam we also can work closely with Dana City because our approach is a local capacity building, like mentioned by Dr. Tojan. So we hope that we collaborate with local government, local industry, as well as local university, of course, with the society as well. And uh, in Philippines, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we also work with the uh, local government, uh, Cavite province, uh, and then they choose uh, Rimus River as a catch catchment studies. And for the research, uh, we collaborate with uh, the La Salle University and Cavite State University for doing river monitoring, as well as uh, for the household survey. Next, please. Yeah. This is uh, the activities we hope that we can start this year, like mentioned again by Dr. Torjan. Uh, we already delayed due to COVID-19. Uh, we hope that we can uh, start this year with FASI Monre as well as Danang City. And I also saw in the list there's a local uh, university. Uh, I would like to add also for Indonesia and Vietnam, we have the same stages in the World Economic Forum. 
Indonesia and Vietnam already established a national plastic action partnership. Like Indonesia is already start uh, two years ago. Uh, so I believe Vietnam just launched last year, if I'm not mistake. So I think it's a good start in ASEAN to have this kind of platform to have a standard how to reduce plastic pollution in the region. So we hope that uh, in the future, I mean uh, this year, we have some workshop uh, training as well as uh, survey uh, in Danang City uh, and of course with in Vietnam uh, for sure. Uh, thank you so much. Look forward for collaboration with Vietnam government as well as uh, the local government. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marianne and Dr. Irishman. Coming up next, we'll start with the first sessions on the policy and the program of plastic reduction in Da Nang. I would like to invite Dr. Irishman, Director of the uh, Southeast Asian uh, Research Centers, uh, Mr. Vong Win Chiang, Deputy Director of Dondri and Dai to co-chair this session. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now I will have a presentation. Yeah. My presentation is the overview of uh, policies on mitigating marine plastic policy in Vietnam. Next slide, please. My presentation is divided into three parts. The first part is the undertaking orientation and policy of Vietnam to manage and reduce plastic debris and the major international partners. And thirdly, is the problems that need solution. So for the uh, the efforts of Vietnam in tackling marine plastic debris, is the policy of Vietnam in uh, marine plastic debris. So I think that all the delegates here today, you have a good grab grip of the. Uh, policies. But however, I'd like to, to go through this. First of all, the resolution number 36, as you've seen here in 2018, on the strategy for sustainable marine economic development to 2030 with a vision to 2040, which state that prevent control and significant reduce pollutions as well as to be a pioneer in the reduction of marine plastic waste, also strengthen international cooperation. Secondly, it's decision number 1746 in 2019 on the National Action Plan for Ocean Plastic Waste Management Debris to 2030. And thirdly, is the proposal on the International Center for Marine Plastic Debris Management on the sixth session of the General Assembly of the Global Environmental Fund. And fourthly, the project of strengthened plastic waste management in Vietnam. And finally, the key program on basic investigation of resource and environment of sea and island up to 2030. These have been the documents, I think the, it's very important, that relates to the plastic debris management. Especially to the National Action Plan on Marine Plastic Debris, we see the five objectives with five solutions. This is the, these are the tools for plastic management. Vietnam has spent lots of efforts in tackling marine plastic debris from activities 
such as in community activities or three R's. You see here collection, management, communication. about the uh, international cooperation in mitigating marine plastic debris. Many have been implemented on supporting VASI to finalize the documents on marine plastic management on the local, at central and local level. Secondly, the method and principles in 3R practice. These practice have been adopted meant by some partners in local level. Thirdly is the communication activities to raise public awareness or to build pilot recycling plastic debris or some other activities such as monitoring design, technical regulation of um, uh, monitoring and some typical projects that can be said here is like the one from USAID with Clean City Blue Ocean or WWF is the Marine Plastic Debris Mitigation Project in Vietnam or ADB is actually in the uh, procedures of uh, development and uh, is going to be approved soon. Use of resource and recycling to reduce plastic debris pollution in Asian Pacific regions. This one is expected to build pilot re plastic recycling sites. Here's an example between Vietnam and Japan cooperation. Coming up next, maybe the deputy director of the Vietnam Institute of Seas and Island is going to have a presentation about this. And all the issues that I've mentioned that we see the problems to be solved we see that Vietnam has um, taken great efforts in building policies to reduce plastic waste and, on, and plastic in general, and localities and centrals have good co corporations. But we have to see what is the, the real problem, the core problem. So let me ask, what is, can you find me the data, the data on the basic research or the practical data on the pollution level in Da Nang. What level is it in Da Nang and what solution is it? So I believe this is the problem that we're trying to say today. Can we really say that, that Da Nang has enough data on the pollution level in Da Nang? Or do we have other solutions to solve it? This is the question that I have mentioned. And on the other hand, there are other issues. Through this discussions with partners, the Vietnam administration of Seas and Island have found a number of issues that this would need support in the future. And maybe we can mm -hmm. find the priorities to avoid duplications mm -hmm or waste of resources. So I can, uh, would like to state some, uh, propose uh, some ideas. The first of all, how to mobilize the financial resource for marine plastic debris. We see here many organizations, international organizations, as well as from the government resources. How do we mobilize it in the most effective way? Secondly, we need a roadmap to transform Vietnam into a circular economy. As far as I know, some projects have mentioned about this. This is the problem that Vietnam is concerning about. In order to, to build such a roadmap, can we already do it? Is it the right time for this? These are all the questions that I would hope that we can find the answer so that we can find the support of Vietnam government to have the best solution. Thirdly, 
is to appeal for the participation of sectors on marine plastic debris. Currently, Vietnam is you know, researching and working on the um, public private uh, corporations as well as other methods to promote initiatives for uh, three R's or regulations or procedures or standards to um, support uh, sectors on this marine plastic sector, the debris issues. And fourthly, it's very important, is the technology assistance and transfer. Well, let's say what is the best technologies for Vietnam? I think it's an issue that we are having concerns over. Do we need a platform on transboundary pollution? And finally, is to strengthen or build capacity for Vietnam at central level or local level. We would propose that we could, uh, with the support of international partners, can we together with the Vietnam administration of CNC, can we build a regional research centers? Can we place it in Hanoi, the capital, or Da Nang? Let us see with the uh, uh, participations and attendance of the Miss Ambassador here. We would hope for your concerns and attention. Thank you very much. Coming up next, may I ask Miss Nguyen Thi Kim Ha, Deputy Director of the uh, Environmental uh, Branch Departments on the uh, Pollution Reports in Da Nang. This is a very important report, so please, yes. Ms. Gret Loshen. Ambassador of Norwegian to Vietnam and Lao DPR. Uh, Mr. Nguyen Quillam, Deputy Director of Vietnam Administrations of Sinsa Island. Mr. Phong Nguyen Chuong, Deputy Director of Da Nang Don Re. Dr. Nguyen Mi Hang, Deputy Director of Departments of uh, Science and Technologies International Corporation of Asi. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, on the workshops of local capacity buildings on uh, plastic reduction in Da Nang and its impact. So, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to join with the reports on solid waste management on combating plastic debris movement in Da Nang City. Throughout the workshop, I would like to introduce that we have two partners and colleagues. It's the Tangkhe District People's Committee to have on a pilot uh, plastic management reduction sites this is one of the eight districts in Da Nang. And another one of the Japanese Institute of Policies and Strategies on Da Nang management of um, solid waste, especially in plastic waste. So in these three presentation. So my presentation is focused on the approach of integrated management on solid waste, especially in plastic waste in the city. Yes, before, first of all, I would like to introduce to the Norwegian ambassador as well as international 
partners. Da Nang is one of the five central cities in Vietnam. We have a population of more than one million people, with six districts and two local sub-districts. Some of the geographic uh, features of Da Nang is very, uh, we have very special. It's a home to the six in uh, heritage, cultural heritage, and coming to Da Nang, you could see a lot of cultural heritage in the middle region of Vietnam. And for the development of Da Nang, we would like to f stress on the development. Apart from these services, Da Nang is investing on industrial activities, as you see on the maps. This is an industrial zone that is going to be established throughout the cities, especially in the um, inter information technologies and other technologies. And uh, so development. In the 46 years of the development of Da Nang City, we are building the cities with the main pillars. We are building the cities to be developing in full flesh in high tech service and in a sustainable environmental city. We're hoping to be a, a sustainable environmental city in 2045. This has been a new approach of the city. In the management of uh, solid waste, we have the following issues. In the 10 years throughout the development of economics, waste have been increasing by 8 to 10 percent in a city, which is, I think, is an average increase. But in some period, the increase rate is very high, such as from 2016 to 2019. Along with service and tourism, it is more than 15%. And in a forecast, in 2025, we would have more than 1.6 thousand tons exhaust per day. We are now currently over 1,000 tons of domestic waste per day. In 2030, it's over 2,000. In 2040, it's 2,500 to 3,000. We have researched with other international partners. We see their change in constitutions of the waste in the city. Previously, the organic is high. Is a majority, but in the th coming three year, the organic uh, waste is reduced. The plastic one is increasing from 20 to 30 percent. So I think there's a change in the waste, especially in plastic waste. In the management activities, in the city area we have a integrated approach with the waste in according to strategies of waste management so we are we have have to describe shortly here let's take a look inside the you see the waste coming from the household will be sorted or segregated at source. This is according to the city's decisions. So according about the uh, transportations of the waste, we invest on transit station to reduce road transportations with the waste. There have been five projects with five transit stations with a capacity of more than 200 tons a day of each station. 
Some station have a capacity of five hundred. At the end so end site, we implement disposal in the Khangsan disposal site or landfill site. At this area, we need to improve the environment in the Khangsan area, and also we have to ensure the implementations of the West in the area. So we strive in 2023 to have waste management factories that can comply with the national standards. So this is the four pillars of the city waste management area. We have to improve, overcome the environmental pollution, improve environmental standards of surrounding residents. This is because we care about the life of the neighborhood. And third goal is to solve the solid waste treatment issue to meet with the national strategies objectives that they ask cities like Da Nang to have no longer have any uh, disposals, self disposal uh, cases. This has been some activities on that we're collecting the garbage debris on river and beach. This has been doing for a while now. About the management of solid and plastic waste, since December 2018, Don Ray we have advised the city to start a movement of plastic debit reductions in the administration office in the city. So in April 2019, uh, Danang has asked that no longer will be no longer plastic debris in the workshop or seminars, especially in this building, and this has been done very strictly. So another group of solution is we have uh, communicate uh, wider and deeper to different neighborhoods and localities by uh, March thir 31st. We have a uh, biannual assessment reports of the site sorting uh, movement of Da Nang. We have a uh, positive results. Many, we received many positive comments from investor until now. Our path our decisions on the integrated management of solid weight is rightfully accepted by the people. And, and another good news is that this is proper and following the decisions of the Prime Minister. We have been very quick on following the Prime Minister's uh, decisions and guidelines. We have received a good support from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, especially in so on plastic waste. In 2019, we have a discussion between stakeholders on the joining hands for plastic free community. Not only at city level, we have mobilized a good participation source, which is the women union at various level. The women here have a conf uniform and corresponding uh, movement 
as well as the veteran unions with more than 10,000 members which is, who, who are co contributing well in the area of seven districts. I know this has been a harsh at the beginning, but now three districts have their own management plan for solid waste and plastic waste with the support of international organization. Thirdly is the equipment tools. When the city promulgate the decisions or plans for waste sorting or segregations, we have a plan for documents for uh, communications and this has been hand over to districts to finish the communication plan. So each household will have one yellow bag to follow their sortings in accordance with the city's movement. These have been the documents for stakeholders such as students, pupils, or the city uh, union, or the street union. In more than two years implementation of the West segregation, it is believed that the saw resources mobilized from the society is very large. In 2020, according to reports of localities, we have collected 200 tons and recycled especially the unions, the amount of money we collected is about 1 billion Vietnam Dong. This has been a good support on the activities, activists. Uh, as for school, we have separate plans. We have volunteers, organizations, and environmental organizations that step together with us about the implementation solutions allowed me to uh, introduce the map there are four groups of the recycle such as water plastic metal hazardous such as battery light bulb third is domestic and fourthly is the construction waste. So this full four categories, categories is handed over to a different localities with instructions. So this is the two models that have been selected by localities. Some localities choose a business or units to collect the uh, waste, or some in some areas, the veterans and women unions would collect the waste. So each locality has their own choice. And this is the roadmap for the waste sorting to 2025 in the city area. We have clear cut objective that distribute to each agencies. And the, the fifth group of solution is the support um, of organizations to Da Nang in the, in the past. With such an integrated approach, we are grateful for the supports of projects. Currently, we have the support from Yokohama City on the waste sorting, segregation, or the closed loop circle on marine plastic waste. Coming up next, our partner is going to 
to present and uh, as well as UNDP has small plans support for the women union in each commune on plastic waste management especially that the organization is welcome here because we have a framework that organizations will implement in the main framework of the city that is why it is easier to mobilize uh, human and financial resources on the results you see that localities have good results we have a single out approach in each uh, group each will have a different and uh, such as the agent authorities uh, businesses citizens and it is the results in the past two years and some experience or some good lessons that we have drawn out allowed me to say that we have six groups. The first is the advice on an integrated approach on the city solid waste management approach. We need to enhance on the plan. We will not stop at four, four category segregations. We'll see if there's any more way to separate or segregate the waste. Some policies have not been able to change, but we'll use so focus on community. And secondly, we will immobilize supports from the society at from the segregation steps to collections to recycle, reuse or treatment so that the rate of treatment in the city uh, centers is at the minima is minimized. And the third lesson is a, actually a lesson of success is that we focus on communication. It's been two years. We have more than 10 community that work on plastic models. In the future, we will go deeper on this. And fourthly, we have to build a support policy. What kind of policy for the city union that what kind of, that trickles their good what uh, incentives that we can give to the businesses so that they could contribute well to the waste collections this is a, a very important one the fifth one is the increase of management monitoring this we need international support. How can we monitor and identify microplastics in beaches and or lakes? So we need your support. Uh, so how do we uh, call for support? Not only in financial form, but in other forms such as technical assistance so through our management, so we think that there are six groups of solutions in the future. We'll try to go in more details. So that ends my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for a very detailed presentation. So we are very uh, limited on time. So let us come with Mr. Huang Teng Bing presentations on the creative and initiative approach on plastic waste in Vietnam. Yes, an innovative and
So, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Nguyen Khoi Lam, Mr. Phong Nguyen Chiang, and Ms. Nguyen Thi Biang, and ladies and gentlemen. So, first of all, I'd like to have a greeting to all of you here in the online platform, platform as well as in this um, hall today. As we have heard many discussions so in Vietnam, in our sides, we uh, the UN would like to share some of our parts here. We'd like to share with uh, you on our ideas here in the workshop here, with a very short slides. So the areas that creates most plastic waste is the ASEAN area. So in such an area, so solutions is needed, such as the ASEAN submits with commitments from nations, as well as uh, many other solutions at regional level, national level, or local level is proposed. and found as national action plan or local action plan. So this has been on the prime minister decisions, directives or resolutions. So in UNDP Vietnam, we base on such an approach, which is called the integrated approach. But we add an innovative essence onto it. What's the main regulations on this? Is that we uh, deliver policy advisory, or we left no one behind, or promote innovation and experimentations, and generate collective intelligence, and develop multi stakeholders platforms. So with such an uh, criteria, allow we would like to share some points. First of all, at the regional level, with the support from the Norwegian government, the no government of Vietnam has implemented ending plastic regional innovation approach. We find initiatives of ASEAN to solve local plastic pollution. This has been in the four countries, Vietnam, as, uh, Philippines, Thailand, and Indonesia. In 2020, we and the VASI have completed the first phase on fighting the initiatives in Vietnam and Thailand. So, uh, in a more detail, in 2020, with the goal in Ha Long Bay and Koh Samui, Thailand. With such a topic, we appeal, we attract 159 applications in Ha Long Bay and Koh Samui. And these solutions come from seven countries of ASEAN. And these, uh, all of these applications have been in the final of um, round and we've selected the winners. Of course, most all of the solutions are new and valuable, but we have managed to seek out the best. Some of the refill day or the breathing biodegradable straws or A system to convert aluminum laminated thermoplastic. These initiatives is going under uh, more supports with the support of the Nawi Norwegian government. So in 2021, we implement the second phases in Indonesia, especially in the Longbok 
Islands and the Samai Island Philippines with the coding timeline. And the second program, so in the first program we focus on local initiatives, a second program is the socialized model in the five city on waste management. Đà Nẵng, Bình Định, Bình Thuận, Quy Nhơn, Bình Dương, Hạ Long Bay. Of course, we're headed over plastic waste, so it's very hard to... But let us know that plastic waste is a part of solid waste. So 12% of total domestic waste. So with this program, we, with the support of Norwegian embassies, we implement in five cities. We managed to build on five sub-projects to cooperate with the local uh, unions, such as the uh, farmer unions and the uh, women unions, as Ms. Hai previously mentioned. Activities with Da Nang Wim Women's Union, we managed in Nguyen Sơn and Hoa Vang districts to promote on sorting because we all know that the women unions is a core union that can connect different parts, different members of the families and other parts of the society such as the scrap pickers. So this union is good very good in a, that it can enable the uh, platform or uniform implementations. Apart from these two programs that the Norwegian uh, government has mentioned, we would like to focus on the sustainable production and consumptions in the GAF chemical projects is to promote sustainable productions and consumption to the use of eco-label and the life cycle management approach. And secondly, reduce use and release of hazardous chemical or POP in the industrial process of some material, including plastic. As you have known, plastic that has claw is very hazardous and persistent. So how do we remove this? How do we make a good practice out of it to reduce the hazardous substance is a very important content. And thirdly, is promote green chemistry and circular economy in chemical industry, targeting six industrial sectors, including the plastic sector. And the final content in UNEP, we have uh, pilots or innovatives and our policy advisory. We focus on waste and circular economy. So you know UNDP is, is joining with Vazi Monre and the Ispondre of Monre to build circular economy into the laws and realizations in the coming laws on the environment. Uh, Another is going on the national action plan. So each sector is going to have their own action action plans. So we're now mm, joining hand with Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to have the action plan developed soon. And finally, is the national action plan on chemical. And finally, the experiment of waste management of Da Nang Circular Economy Hub which I've mentioned before, it's just cooperation with the women's union and the corporations of that mainstreaming of circular econ economy into the Da Nang DNES Innovation Hub. This is a network that provides training for enterprises in Da Nang or in the middle regions to adopt circular economy. As you know, circular in economy is part of a, is a very important activities that can reduce
plastic generation. So with our programs and projects that in the past and in the future, we believe that we would hope for your support and sharing of information to go directly into applications from Monterey or Da Nang or relevant stakeholders to reduce plastic waste in general to go moving forward to sustainable development. Thank you, Mr. Ving. Before we move into our break, let us go to Ms. Dang Te Thang Bing, directors of the CCBO by USAID. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nguyen Mi Hang. Mr. Nguyen Kue Lam, Deputy Director of Basi Mondre, Mr. Vong Nguyen Chuang, Deputy Director of Dondre Danang, Mr. Morton Hockland, Norwegian Ambassador in Asia, Greta Loshen, Ambassador in Vietnam. As Dr. Hang mentioned, my name is Tang Bing, Direct National Director of CCBO of USAID. First of all, we'd like to thank the organizers to invite CCBO this, over this workshop today. CCBO is actually one of the youngest partners here. So today, me and Mr. Nyan is a solid waste expert. I'm very happy to be here today to share and learn. So. On behalf of CCBO, I'd like to to introduce about our programs. Very brief because we're actually in the setting up parts in Vietnam. My parts consist of the main introductions on CCBO, our goal objectives, geographic focus, engagement sites, approach mechanisms, activities, and finally, on the compositions of the program. CCBO means Clean Cities, Blue Ocean. It's a flagship program of USAID for combating ocean plastic pollution at source. Our projects will be in five year approved by USAID in 2019. However, we're in the setting up parts and I'm the first employee of the projects. We will implement in cities and towns, especially in rapidly urbanizing areas in low and middle income countries. As I've mentioned before, this is a global project. We are also implementing in some Caribbean, Asian countries in Asia. We're in Indonesia, Maldives, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Vietnam. In Latin and Caribbean, we're in Dominican Republic of Dominican and Peru. So we, I hope that is an international uh, project, so we will bring out good experience for Vietnam. So with our geographic focus, our scope, we have approval in four cities, Bien Hoa, Da Nang Hue, and Phu Quoc. So in the first year, CCB always hope to bring out good lessons and experience on models and initiatives of success so that it can be universalized to other parts. As for the approach, you've seen there are two circles. The first one is the approach of CCBO that expect that we can support. We would hope 
to support on the weak policies or inadequate service delivery, or system financing issues, or waste collections and recovery, or livelihood for formal and informal third waste management sectors. Or we can support on the lack of environmental mm -hmm. awareness or education. So in the other circles, it is the expected stakeholders. CCBOs that hope that we have an opportunity to work with policy authorities at central and local level or organizations in the four sides of our programs. We choose a group of informal waste picker or women or youth union or tourist service such as hotel and manufacturer. So for our implementation, We can provide technical assistance we have a group of experts on technologies or solid waste we hope to gain support from those experts to provide support for vietnam we have a group of business the main one of the main activities of CCBO is to mobilize to engage the business for support. Uh, on the other hand, we'd hope for the supports and coordinations of local ladies on capacity building and expertise sharing. So apart from the experts or technical employee of CCBO in Vietnam, we will join hands with authorities or stakeholders to recruit more for the projects. The third part is a grant program for institutions, organizations in Vietnam to to implement local missions for economy, circular economy models or behavior chain capacity building. We call for applications or proposals from 50,000 to 150,000 investment. We hope that in time that the local institutions is in part of it, we could call for more investment. Finally, is the on the activities of CCBO in Vietnam. We strive towards like building capacity of CCBO engagement sites, such as revisions of solid waste management plans or coordinations workshop or three R's of CCBO sites of social behaviors change for three R uh, especially in, in the livelihood challenges for waste picking worker. We would hope to have contribution to the gender equality and women economic empowerment to support women in the informal waste picking movement. And we would hope to uh, provide support to the national government for the implement implementation of the Vietnam National Action Plan. So, uh, so we're currently in the first steps. So in the future, we would hope for support from local authorities so that we can determine the area of corporations or issues related to policies. We're going to coordinate the 
the joining hand between uh, international and domestic experts and we could facilitate donors co coordination to avoid overlap about the grant programs we will first provide some small grants for local institutions to implement initiatives in Hanang, Danang. We'd hope to get to the support of the central authority so that our implementation could go smooth. So we would expect to have a launching workshop maybe in the near future. Danang is one of the choice that I've been been wondering. Yes, we'd hope for support from the central and local level. What about the, our structures of organizations? We have a shift of party in in USA with a deep understanding, and the deputy chief of parties on the overall administrations. And then we have other chief on the uh, suggest the CCBO in the Asia Regional Directors and with supports on many other social behavior change or gender director or capacity developments and this is the structures of CCBO in Vietnam we have a small office in Hanoi as I've mentioned we have supports of experts in solid waste uh, and uh, grand solid waste and uh, Grand specialists and finance managers. This is the link of introductions of the CCBO. As I mentioned before, we have a program statement that calls for organizations to send their application or proposal. So mm -hmm. the deadline is the end of this month so i'd like to send to the provinces that if you have any concerns or any needs kindly lead them and introduce them to ccbo lately i will send you my name cards to the distinguished delegates i would hope for future cooperation thank you Thank you, Dang Thi Thang Bing. A small office, but grand program. We have 15 minutes of break. I would hope for you to come back later in time. So the second part is rather long, so rest well, break well, my friend. ngay từ những hành động nhỏ nhất để góp phần bảo vệ môi trường sống cho chúng ta và các thế hệ mai sau. Từ năm 2018, sau lời kêu gọi của Thủ tướng Chính phủ cùng với sự phát động của Ủy ban Nhân dân Thành phố Đà Nẵng về phong trào chống rác thải nhựa, nhiều cơ quan, đơn vị, tổ chức, doanh nghiệp và người dân trên địa bàn thành phố đã có nhiều hành động thiết thực, ý nghĩa và hiệu quả để chống giảm thiểu rác thải nhựa. Với mục tiêu Tỷ lệ chất thải rắn sinh hoạt được tái sử dụng, tái chế đạt ít nhất 12% vào năm 2020 và 15% vào năm 2025. Sở Tài nguyên và Môi trường thành phố Đà Nẵng đã ban hành kế hoạch và triển khai thực hiện tức thời, rộng khắp, 
Đến nay, Đà Nẵng đã và vẫn đang tiến hành nhiều hoạt động hiệu quả, phù hợp được sự ủng hộ của người dân. Đối với thành phố Đà Nẵng, chúng tôi xác định đây là một tiêu chí quan trọng để hướng tới mục tiêu trở thành thành phố môi trường. Trong các chỉ tiêu ở giai đoạn mới, thành phố bổ sung chỉ tiêu cụ thể về giảm rác thải nhựa, túi ni lông cần đạt được tại các quận huyện và sở ngành. Đây sẽ là hoạt động xuyên suốt trong công tác bảo vệ môi trường của thành phố. Minh chứng cho sức ảnh hưởng và hiệu quả của chương trình khi thực sự đi vào cộng đồng dân cư được thể hiện ở nhiều mặt, trong đó phải kể đến công tác tuyên truyền, nâng cao nhận thức, vận động cộng đồng tham gia chống rác thải nhựa với những con số ấn tượng. 100% các sở ban ngành, hội đoàn thể đã phát động phong trào chống rác thải nhựa, tuyên truyền, vận động công chức, viên chức, người lao động không sử dụng sản phẩm nhựa khó phân hủy, sử dụng một lần, khuyến khích sử dụng các sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. 100% các sở ban ngành, đơn vị hành chính, hội đoàn thể các trường học đã triển khai sử dụng chai thủy tinh đựng nước thay thế chai nhựa tại các phòng họp, hạn chế sử dụng băng rôn, khẩu hiệu làm bằng chất liệu nhựa dùng một lần, không sử dụng chai nhựa dùng một lần đựng nước uống trong các hội nghị, hội thảo, ngày lễ và các sự kiện chuyên ngành. Bên cạnh đó, hàng trăm buổi tuyên truyền phổ biến kiến thức, thực hành kỹ năng phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn được tổ chức đều khắp tại các quận huyện. Trong đó, tuyên truyền có tập trung, trọng điểm tại các địa điểm công cộng tập trung đông người như các chợ, trung tâm thương mại, khu vui chơi giải trí trên địa bàn thành phố. Ngoài ra, còn triển khai tập huấn tuyên truyền chuyên sâu ở các cấp hội phụ nữ, đoàn thanh niên, tổ dân phố, khu dân cư. Phong trào tái chế rác thải, thu gom chai nhựa, thủy tinh cũng trở thành điểm nhấn thú vị trong các hoạt động tại các sở, ban ngành, hội đoàn thể. chúng ta cần phải triển khai một cách đồng loạt và triển khai với một tinh thần hết sức quyết liệt. thì theo tính toán của chúng tôi thì nếu chúng ta làm tốt cái công tác phân loại tại nguồn á thì thành phố sẽ tiết kiệm được khoảng từ 15, 20 và nếu chúng ta đạt được năm loại thì có thể tiết kiệm tới 50% cái chi phí mà dành cho cái việc xử lý rác sau này. Một điểm sáng khác không thể không nhắc tới đó chính là hiệu quả tuyên truyền từ các kênh báo chí, đặc biệt trong năm 2020. Ở lĩnh vực này, thành phố Đà Nẵng đã đạt được kết quả khá ấn tượng. Các cơ quan báo chí địa phương và trung ương thường trú tại thành phố Đà Nẵng đã tích cực xây dựng nội dung tuyên truyền, đăng tải gần 450 tiến tài, 50 phóng sự hưởng ứng phong trào chống rác thải nhựa và phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn, triển khai các chuyên trang môi trường đô thị và thành phố môi trường, thành phố Bốn An, văn hóa văn minh đô thị nhằm nâng cao hiệu quả tuyên truyền theo chủ đề Đặc biệt, phóng sự thánh rác giới thiệu một gương điển hình trong phong trào rác thải nhựa đạt giải ba giải báo chí ứng xử văn hóa do Bộ Thông tin và Truyền thông và Hội Nhà báo Việt Nam tổ chức. Giải nhất cuộc thi viết về gương người tốt, việc tốt. Các chương trình được đăng tải nhiều kênh của Đài Phát Thanh Truyền hình Đà Nẵng, website, dịch vụ công trực tuyến, các mạng xã hội, tạo ra hiệu ứng và sức lan tỏa rõ rệt. Bên cạnh công tác tuyên truyền, Kết quả của phong trào chống rác thải nhựa thành phố Đà Nẵng trong năm 2020 còn thể hiện ở nhiều hoạt động nổi bật. Ủy ban nhân dân thành phố đã tập trung đầu tư các công cụ tuyên truyền, phương tiện, trang thiết bị phục vụ phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn cho Ủy ban nhân dân các quận huyện. Bảy trên bảy quận huyện đang tổ chức triển khai đồng loạt công tác phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn trên toàn địa bàn thành phố. 100% cơ quan thành ủy, hội đồng nhân dân thành phố, mặt trận thành phố, các sở ban ngành tại trung tâm hành chính thành phố, các trụ sở ban ngành liên quan, bố trí thùng phân loại rác tài nguồn, thu gom rác thải nhựa. Để nâng cao hiệu quả quản lý chất thải nhựa trên địa bàn thành phố, Sở Tài nguyên và Môi trường đã chủ động tham mưu việc tiếp nhận, tổ chức chuyển giao, triển khai các dự án hợp tác quốc tế như dự án khép kín vòng tuần hoàng. Nâng tầm đổi mới để giải quyết ô nhiễm rác thải nhựa tại các thành phố ASEAN, Sở Tài nguyên và Môi trường hiện đang phối hợp triển khai xây dựng kế hoạch hành động quản lý rác thải nhựa đại dương trên địa bàn thành phố Đà Nẵng đến năm 2030, dự kiến trình Ủy ban nhân dân thành phố ban hành trong quý 2 năm 2021. Các mô hình sáng kiến tiêu biểu của phong trào chống rác thải nhựa cũng tạo được nhiều tiếng vang. 
Với những kết quả đạt được, có thể nói công tác triển khai phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn nói chung và phong trào chống rác thải nhựa nói riêng trên địa bàn thành phố Đà Nẵng đã huy động sự vào cuộc mạnh mẽ của cả hệ thống chính trị, sự hưởng ứng của người dân thành phố, tạo ra các hoạt động sôi nổi rộng khắp trong mọi tầng lớp nhân dân trên địa bàn thành phố về ý thức chống rác thải nhựa, bảo vệ môi trường, thu hút sự quan tâm của cộng đồng dân cư, đặc biệt là các tổ chức quốc tế. Tuy nhiên, cần phải nhìn nhận một số hạn chế. Do tác động của dịch Covid-19, việc thực hiện phong trào chống rác thải nhựa và kế hoạch tổ chức triển khai phân loại chất thải rắn sinh hoạt tại nguồn bị ảnh hưởng. Các địa phương tập trung công tác phòng chống dịch. Hiện nay, chưa có hướng dẫn, tài liệu cụ thể để địa phương triển khai công tác truyền thông. Ngoài ra, công tác tuyên truyền chưa tiếp cận sâu đến đối tượng cơ sở sản xuất, kinh doanh, dịch vụ ẩm thực để tuyên truyền, vận động, thay thế các sản phẩm nhựa dùng một lần. Vẫn còn một số hộ dân chưa hòa nhập, nhận thức về môi trường và phân loại rác thải trong cộng đồng còn hạn chế, chưa có thói quen phân loại rác. Các sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường có giá thành cao hơn nhiều so với sản phẩm nhựa dùng một lần, nên người dân chưa sẵn sàng lựa chọn sản phẩm thân thiện để thay thế. Trước những khó khăn, thách thức đó, Sở Tài nguyên và Môi trường đề nghị các cơ quan chức năng sớm hoàn thiện cơ chế, chính sách khuyến khích sản xuất, đồng thời cung cấp tài liệu tuyên truyền hướng dẫn thực hiện chống rác thải nhựa, giới thiệu các sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường để địa phương tổ chức hiệu quả công tác truyền thông đến cộng đồng và thực hiện thay đổi hành vi. Với sự hoàn thiện hơn về cơ chế, chính sách, định hướng chú trọng phong trào chống rác thải nhựa trong các hoạt động lao động sinh hoạt, học tập của các sở ban ngành, cùng với hiệu quả ngày càng nâng cao của công tác thông tin truyền thông, chúng ta tin tưởng rằng chống rác thải nhựa sẽ trở thành một ý thức thường trực, thường xuyên và thói quen thường nhật của mọi tầng lớp nhân dân tại thành phố Đà Nẵng, góp phần không nhỏ vào thành công của mục tiêu xây dựng thành phố môi trường trong tương lai không xa. Rác sinh hoạt được phân loại thành 4 nhóm, rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Cơ quan, đơn vị, cơ sở sản xuất kinh doanh, dịch vụ hoặc chủ nguồn thải bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng để phân loại rác theo hướng dẫn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc theo phương án thu gom, vận chuyển rác thải được ủy ban nhân dân quận huyện phê duyệt. Rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn, rác còn lại, hợp đồng với đơn vị thu gom có chức năng để thu gom xử lý. Tại khu vực công cộng được bố trí thùng rác hai ngăn để người dân, du khách phân loại. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Rác sinh hoạt được phân loại thành 4 nhóm, rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Cơ quan, đơn vị cơ sở sản xuất kinh doanh, dịch vụ hoặc chủ nguồn thải bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng để phân loại rác theo hướng dẫn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải được ủy ban nhân dân quận huyện phê duyệt. Rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn, rác còn lại hợp đồng với đơn vị thu gom có chức năng để thu gom xử lý. Tại khu vực công cộng được bố trí thùng rác hai ngăn để người dân, du khách phân loại. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm Rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại Tùy theo địa bàn, rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hộ, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do ủy ban nhân dân quận huyện lựa chọn 
và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Các còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm: rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Tùy theo địa bàn, rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do Ủy ban Nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Các còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được Ủy ban Nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm: rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Tùy theo địa bàn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Rác còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm: rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Tùy theo địa bàn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Rác còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm: rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Tùy theo địa bàn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Rác còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn. Thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn. Hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm: rác tài nguyên, rác nguy hại, rác xây dựng, rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại. Tùy theo địa bàn. Rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Rác còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được ủy ban nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. 
vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp hãy phân loại rác tại nguồn thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm rác. thành phố Đà Nẵng triển khai phân loại rác tại nguồn hộ gia đình thực hiện phân loại rác thành các nhóm rác tài nguyên rác nguy hại rác xây dựng rác kích thước lớn và rác còn lại theo địa bàn, rác tài nguyên được thu gom định kỳ bởi hội, đoàn thể hoặc đơn vị thu gom được địa phương chọn. Rác nguy hại được mang đến các điểm của bố trí thùng chứa chuyên dụng hoặc trực tiếp đưa cho đơn vị thu gom. Rác xây dựng và rác kích thước lớn được tập trung tại điểm tập kết do Ủy ban Nhân dân quận, huyện lựa chọn và sẽ được đơn vị có chức năng thu gom xử lý. Rác còn lại được thu gom theo phương án thu gom vận chuyển rác thải đã được Ủy ban Nhân dân quận, huyện phê duyệt. Vì thành phố Đà Nẵng xanh sạch đẹp, hãy phun lửa rác tại nguồn. một ca thế connect people
Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin the second session. I would like to invite Dr. Marianne of the Norwegian Institute of Water Research, Mr. Wong Wenchung, Deputy Director of Danang Donre, to host these sessions along with me. This session is about plastic pollution and the views of the stakeholders. We will begin by the presentation of Ms. Nguyen Tu Chang from WWF. Ms. Nguyen Tu Chang, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Greta, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Nguyen Quilam, Ms. Nguyen Quyang, and ladies and gentlemen, on the online platform and on the audition hall today, I'm Nguyen Tu Chang, coordinator of WWF, and it's my pleasure to be here today to share on the efforts of plastic reductions in Da Nang City. We'd like to share an initiative called the Plastic Smart Cities of Tanke District in Danang. Our main content is Plastic Smart Cities Program of WWF, Status of Plastic Debris Generation in Tanke, and Orientation Delications and some activities. Let me be the one to share about the initiatives of WWF. How will this initiative be implemented? Let me ask Mr. Le Chumington, the head of the Bureau of Natural Resources and Environment of Tanke District, to share with me. The WWF has more than 50 years on the protecting the environment and biodiversity so that together we protect the better futures and where human and the environment and nature could create a future worth living. We strive towards that. WWF has programs in the six components on forests, oceans, fresh water, wildlife, climate change, and biodiversity. So in the 1918, the uh, plastic waste has been a goal for WWF and in Vietnam. With the knowledge that we have on the plastic waste, we know that 80% of marine plastic debris comes from the land. So in order to solve the problem at source, we need to have efforts w along with stakeholders to solve the problem at grassroots level, which I mean by the in the land. You, we're seeing the map here. Is there's two things that we can see. The first of all is the how big is the circle and the color of the circle. The big and and small of the circle is is the quantity and the color of the color is the capacity of management. The darker means the worst and uh, the limited management capacity. So we see that Southeast Asia is an area that exhausts a lot, but with poor management capacity. So the WWF initiatives aim for the reduce the thirty percent of plastic leakage, as well as we need to to be one thousand cities that participate in the programs. 
This is the strategy framework of the Plastic, plastic Smart Cities program. We focus on reduce uh, plastic waste. Uh, segregation or improving recycling recovery and landfill management. You see the blue one is the one on planning and the and the agreement is, is the one that we're implementing. So we're currently arranging uh, stakeholders and so that we can bring our proposals and see the input research so that we can find out the status of pollution in localities and understand the waste flow or the of the localities and so that we build work action plan and in the orange parts that we will join with the localities on the policy advisory coordinations of stakeholders as well as promotions of initiatives in the businesses and the monitoring and examination to on the implementation of the action plan so cities that join the program in Vietnam there are 11 sites the red one is the one that has committed and the green one is the one is in uh, we are currently in the process of uh, engaging last year there have been Fuyen, Tanan and Tanghe and three sites at the Fukuok that committed to be a plastic smart cities we have the representative of Tanghe to represent and to presence about what we have achieved in the previous time and uh, with what Tanki have, man, have achieved is what we have mentioned achieved and we we have collected what they have achieved and then we provided a report here so now Mr. Tan could you please come and share the results of plastic smart cities in Tanki district Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, first of all, I would like to greet all of you audience here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased as the head of the bureau of a district to report on the status of plastic debris generation in Tanke district. I think that there will be four com components. Ladies and gentlemen, the first one is as a status. You see, Tanghe district is a central one. With an area of 90, 47 kilometers with a population of 200,000 citizens. We are very we are the most pop, densely populated one, twenty thousand people of meters, kilometers, and with some parts of thirty thousand people of kilometers. We have forty three kilometers of coastline. But the status of waste uh, generation is 190 tons a day. So the collection is 98 to 99% a day. For households, we have 397 grams per capita per day. For plastic, it's 43.2 grams capita a day. 
So in the full lock market, we have the plastic debris makes up for 15.08%. So the uh, luggage amount is 380 kilograms per day. There's some hot spots. So the two banks of full lock channel along the Bochang Railroad, sewage that discharged directly into the sea from Tanke district with a huge mass of plastic debris and debris assembly points in the tank road. We have a waste audit. Throughout the surveys, there are nineteen. So per day, we have nineteen point four gram of plastic bag, two point five gram of multi layer package, um, or layer semi no, uni layer, and single U plastic. We make uh, surveys in Sunha Beach. We have a con in seven consecutive days a uh, package. There are three hundred about three hundred kind of package uh, along tobacco butts, paper, plastic, organic waste, glass, rubber. In my slides, there are some image of the of the plastic waste, a plastic debris in the beach. You see here. You see in the status of Tanke District, we have focused on some. First of all, is we built Tanke to be an environmental district. From 2010 to 2020, we're currently on the process to from 2021 to 2030. So, we have plan on 50 percent of small business household in district markets will use environmentally friendly plastic bags. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very very new issue. Tanke is actually on the the first district on this. We have to use uh, financial mechanisms, financial support on this, so that we can encourage people to use environmental friendly one. In uh, 2020, you know, 11, uh, 2018, we joined with the cities to join the ocean with no plastic, and. Uh, also in 2020, on project mitigating parent plastic debris in Vietnam. In 2020, we promulgate the decision on the action plan on plastic debris management and training costs on capacity building on the development of action plan in 2021. So in the common goals, we aim to reduce plastic waste from the land and raise awareness and change behavior of the single-use plastic, persistent plastic bag, at source segregations and initiative promotions and models. And we hope that in 2020, we reduce 30% of plastic leak, debris leakage in Tanke in comparison to 2020. 100% of state authority do not use plastic bottles and straw in their office building for workshop. Erase at least three debris hotspots. Have at least 10 school with environmental plastic debris mainstreaming activities. We organize regular communications activities. We have seventy percent of households school enterprise to implement domestic waste source segregation and incentives on the implementation of circular economy. In two thousand and twenty five 
the pilot's model will be constitutionalized into document policies. And we reduced 50% of plastic leakage in the district area. We successfully implement the monitoring and enforcement sanction for violations. 100% of households, school, enterprise, workplace, and agency in the district to implement waste source segregation. At least 30% of food and beverage shops commit to use not to use single-use plastic, and 50% of fishermen to commit not to discard fishing gear into the ocean. You see that we have a lot of fishermen in the uh, far shores, so we have to engage them. So we have five contents of actions to review, revise, amend, and finalize mechanisms, policies. Communicate, raise awareness, change behavior on single-use plastic products and marine plastic debris, collect, segregate, transport, and treat plastic debris waste in coastal and marine area, prevent, reduce marine plastic debris from inland and marine resources, and control marine plastic pollution. So, we bring out a pro priority list. We will establish district level working group, issue regulation on plastic bag and single use plastic product, regulation on plastic debris production activities that have been successfully piloted, and monitoring and sanction, proactive cooperate for investments. And secondly, on reduce household plastic debris generation. We develop and finalize the procedures for collection and segregation. Issue the plan on source segregation based on the city plan. And then engage and uh, implement pilot source segregation and organize position back single use plastic movement. And for businesses like hotels and restaurants, we engage and implement pilot source segregation, communications and engage tourist accommodation sites to reduce plastic bag, and appeal and support the business to pilot circular economy model. For schools, we focus on waste audit in some schools in Tangke district, training for office and teachers on uh, waste reductions and implement school with less plastic for reduction of plastic leakage in beaches and coasts. So we join hand with farmers union or youth unions to collect waste on the beach to increase monitoring waste proposal, we build the models of waste trap to collect waste. Another activities in 2020 to 2025, we communicate and engage the fishermen to commit not to discard fishing equipment or plastic waste into the oceans while on their fishing time or training for scrap pickers. So ladies and gentlemen, that have been the activities that we have implemented. Since 19... 2019 February, we use now not to use plastic bottle in the district area. So now 100% of the administrative authorities have complied. So in 2018, Tangkhe is a pioneering locality in Danang City to propose 50% of small business in district market to use environmental friendly plastic bag. And also we have communication sessions in communes. So in 
November, we work with WWF to organ to promulgate the action plans on management and reduction of plastic waste. So through many discussions in 2021, we, WWF and the District People's Committee have made a launch and introductions workshops. So in the implementation process, in this April, we are going to have a training for teachers, uh, officials to on the school with no plastic. Firstly, in three schools in 2023, we'll have 10, 10 schools. We have training communication skill for district unions, or we have banners or arrays of hotspots in May and June. We enhance segregation collection in district area. So my last word, on behalf of Tanker District, thank you, leaders, officers, WWF have helped Tanker Districts in the past. We will promise to do better in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nguyen Tu Chang and Mr. Le Chu Ming Tan for a very vivid presentation. So I believe that with the outcome that the projects of WWF will be a core drive for the waste reductions of Da Nang City. So now I would like to invite Mr. Dang Duc Long. from the University of Da Nang on waste reductions through the activity of students. So, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to have a, to present on a different aspects of the plastic waste reductions through the young generation education. You see, there are many detailed activities, but first of all, I'd like to give a brief of the information about the status of plastic waste in Vietnam. According to Monterey, we are staying the fourth place in the list of countries with plastic released into the seas. So you say plastic consumption in Vietnam has increased tenfold. So let's say that but however, we're just in the average tire in the world. We are lower than China. So you see, maybe we'll, the Vietnam plastic consumption will increase in the future. So we have collected uh, some solutions at the social aspect. We have to change consumer behavior in hand research for innovative solutions or reduce plastic production or increase plastic recycle. So many projects have today have mentioned about this. We also need to increase the use of men environmentally friendly alternatives. And we have to improve awareness raising and information dissemination at wider scales. Now I'd like to speak about about the younger education. This is very important. 
because the youth is the future of this world, and especially when we want to change our lifestyle, our behavior. So the youth is the objective because they are completely innocent. They have no knowledge on this world, so it's easier for them to change than for us. And so, and also, the youth is has a lot of energies that they can change the world. So not only in Vietnam, but in the world, education for the youth. Is very concerns and taken at high priority, especially in Italy and Hungary at the European Research Institute. It's called the Ocean Literacy. This program used with the short sessions with outdoor activities to increase the raise the awareness on the waste collection in the river and in the sea. So this program, some delegates in some universities, I'd like to share with you that this is following an, a new trend, that this can help us to learn new things is called a non delinearizing approach. So here the people will take part as the students, teachers, research and practitioner. So everyone could share the, the experience. So we'll not speak much about the process here. And then this process will take three steps. The first of all is acquiring information. The second, assessment and, and quality assurance. And the third is integrating in the worldview so that the learners could share together. It's what they say in the theory. This process is new and highly effective and is encouraged into a that adaptation in Vietnam. So in Da Nang, especially in the our institute, we have implemented this one in this model. And the th this recent three years, we organized U Invent competition. This activity is a talk from U Invent competitions in American um, STEM model to get students excited and inspire them with STEM knowledge to solve life's problem. So with this topic, we focus on environmental protections and health protection, and we engage hundreds of students in the area of Danang City In this program, in six to eight weeks, teams of high school students will work together with an experienced mentor to identify and deal with real life problems and solve them with initiatives. They need to have models to test so on CT Plastic Waste, they created environmental friendly food wrap or trash that can automatically classify different types of waste. Or they can find in waste and uh, water treatment from veg veg vegetable or they have a uh, mobile app to support user in environmental protections. So apart from these practical deliverables, the students' awareness is highly increased, and through these activities, their friends have also benefited from these products. 
So through these activities, we propose to broaden the UNVAN competitions for high school and secondary students in other locations such as Da Nang suburbs or other province. Or apart from the competitions, we propose the collaborations with high schools to mainstream into education or vocational education for uh, environmental protection courses so that more people could be involved. So this could be universalized to the young generation. I hope that such activities will have crucial contributions to the plastic waste reductions or environmental sustainability. We look forward to support in wider area. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dang Duc Long. Coming up next, I would like Mr. Jansen Man from Evergreen Lab to have to come on stage and have a presentation. And let me say that this is sponsors for today's water. Thank you. Okay, we have the translation right here. Yeah? No, no, I think they're already, they're already discussed. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much to the organizers, the city representatives, the countless organizations, uh, partners, friends, and everyone with the same vision and mission to reduce plastic waste here today. Xin trọng cảm ơn các uh, quý vị đại biểu, đặc biệt cảm ơn ban tổ chức đã mời chúng tôi đến và uh, được trình bày tại cái uh, buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay và tất cả đều hướng đến một cái uh, mục tiêu, một cái nhiệm vụ chung đấy là giảm thiểu uh, chất thải nhựa. Evergreen Labs is an organization that is uh, focused on social, social and environmental development. And we do this in two different ways. One is consulting and advisory, and the other way is actually deriving solutions and implementing them. The way we identify solutions, or shortcomings, I should say, is through the consulting work, through identifying where there aren't any solutions, and afterwards, if we have a shortcoming, we try to solve it. Uh, Evergreen Labs là một tổ chức tư vấn và triển khai các cái dự án về môi trường và xã hội. Uh, cái cách thức mà chúng tôi tiếp cận với các cái uh, vấn đề đó là trước tiên chúng tôi uh, tổ chức các uh, chúng tôi thực hiện các cái dự án, chúng tôi tự phát triển các cái dự án uh, về xã hội và môi trường của riêng mình và song song bên đó chúng tôi có các cái thử nghiệm về uh, các cái dự án này và cũng thực hiện các cái tư các cái tư vấn cho các cái dự án ở bên ngoài nữa và đồng thời tức là trong quá trình mà chúng tôi uh, thực hiện cái tư vấn đó thì chúng tôi đã học hỏi được nhiều và khi mà có những cái uh, uh, những cái phát hiện mới trong cái quá trình thực hiện các cái thử nghiệm này thì chúng tôi cũng sẽ uh, chia sẻ với lại uh, công chúng. We solve it through number one experimentation. This is what often is referred to as piloting, uh, and the number, the main implementation work we do is then to take it to a commercial level. Without that step, we're not going to create sustainable solutions. Mm. That's what we believe in. Cái cách đầu tiên là, cái cách tiếp cận đầu tiên là chúng tôi 
thí điểm các cái mô hình mà chúng tôi tin là sẽ làm việc được và đưa các cái mô hình này trở nên thành những cái mô hình có tính chất thương mại tức là có thể thu lại được lợi nhuận và chúng tôi tin tưởng là nếu mà không có cái bước này thì các cái dự án sẽ không trở thể nào trở thành bền vững được. Our areas of expertise are in waste management, uh, sustainable and community tourism and agriculture. And uh, các cái and we have, we have developed actually 13 projects. Not all of them are now operating entities. Um, we are a small organization, so we have to focus. So our main focus is actually in plastic waste, and we brought two of those solutions here today, and I will tell you more about it. Uh, các cái uh, lĩnh vực mà chúng tôi thực hiện chủ yếu là trong quản lý chất thải, du lịch cộng đồng và nông nghiệp. Uh, chúng tôi có cho đến nay có khoảng tầm 13 các cái dự án mà đã phát triển. Tuy nhiên không phải tất cả các cái dự án này cuối cùng đều có thể trở thành những cái uh, dự án riêng biệt và có cái hiệu quả. Uh, và chúng tôi là một cái tổ chức nhỏ cho nên chúng tôi phải tập trung vào những cái dự án chúng tôi mà có hiệu quả và chủ yếu chúng tôi thực hiện các cái dự án trong lĩnh vực quản lý rác thải nhựa mà tôi sẽ đi cụ thể vào đây. You may have already seen us uh, around, you may have already worked with uh, us either in form of uh, Evergreen Labs or Reform in Waste. Um, but I would like to introduce this project uh, particularly with the intention of replicating this model, not only to Da Nang, but particularly so, but also in any other area that any of the NGOs and development organizations here work in. Uh, có thể là các anh chị quý vị ở đây đã thấy những cái tên uh, Reform Plastic ở đâu đó bởi vì chúng tôi cũng đã tham gia rất nhiều buổi hội thảo như thế này. Uh, tuy nhiên hôm nay chúng tôi đến với mục tiêu là muốn giới thiệu một cách chính thức và cái mong muốn của chúng tôi đấy là đưa được cái dự án này đặc, đến tất cả các cái khu vực tỉnh thành ở Việt Nam đặc biệt là những cái khu vực mà có các cái uh, tổ chức uh, phát triển, các tổ chức phi chính phủ hiện nay đang làm việc. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the different waste ratios. We've heard a lot about it today. What I want to iterate on is if we don't have a solution for the low value plastic, which is the material that is most likely to leak into the waterways and ultimately into the oceans, um, we're going to make it harder on us than it has to be. This is why we focus reform the solution, the approach, on low value plastic and while we could use higher value plastic um, it is better to trade it it is better to actually bring it back into the same uh, circles into a, into a normal recycling process and i will explain you what separates reform approach from a recycling process today Chúng, trong cái buổi hội thảo hôm nay cũng đã nghe được rất là nhiều các cái báo cáo khác nhau uh, đưa ra những cái số liệu về các cái tỷ lệ uh, trong thành phần rác thải cho nên tôi sẽ không đi theo sâu vào đó nữa thay vào đó thì chúng tôi muốn tập trung vào cái uh, việc giải quyết uh, câu hỏi đây là vấn đề rác thải nhựa giá trị thấp uh, trên thực tế thì uh, chúng tôi cũng có thể giải quyết được những cái vấn đề rác nhựa như nhựa, nhựa giá trị cao như nhựa PET nhưng chúng tôi không đi vào bởi vì chúng tôi muốn đưa cái nhựa vốn đã có những cái giải pháp đó trở lại cái vòng quay vốn có của nó. Key to the success of reform was to provide economic value to a material where there simply isn't any. Cái chìa khóa cho cái cách uh, tiếp cận của chúng tôi đấy là làm sao có thể đưa được cái giá trị cho một cái loại rác thải nhựa mà không có ai thu gom uh, trên thực tế là không có cái giá trị về mặt uh, thương mại. The number one priority for us was to have a economically viable solution and that required to bring down the investment cost per ton treated to the absolute minimum because the, the, the material we work with has no economic value. So we couldn't afford going through a normal recycling process. We couldn't afford heating the material twice because heating is very energy intensive and, and therefore very costly. So we created a process that only requires one heating step at the very end and we're deriving a final product from this directly. 
uh, cái bí quyết của cái quy trình của chúng tôi đấy là làm sao phải đảm bảo là cái quy trình nó có cái tính kinh tế uh, và đảm bảo cái tiền đầu tư trên mỗi tấn nó phải được giữ duy trì ở cái mức thấp nhất À, đấy là lý do vì sao trong cái quy trình mà xử lý uh, nhựa bình thường sẽ trải qua hai lần ra nhiệt nhưng cái quy trình của chúng tôi chỉ có một lần thôi để đảm bảo và cái quy trình ra nhiệt này chỉ xảy ra vào cuối cái công đoạn để đảm bảo cái uh, chi phí đầu tư cho một tấn là thấp nhất. And today we are in the fortunate position to have uh, an operating business that is not only generally proven um, but currently we cannot keep up with demand. But that was very clear to us because we are a very small facility. The entire model is set up in a way where we intend to replicate it rather than have one big centralized facility. Và chúng tôi cũng rất là may mắn nhận được cái sự ủng hộ của nhiều đơn vị và trong cái thời điểm hiện tại thì uh, cái hoạt động kinh doanh cũng đang đi lên trên thực tế là cái khả năng sản xuất không đủ để đáp ứng với cái nhu cầu uh, nhưng mà chúng tôi cũng muốn là sẽ duy trì được cái uh, quy mô nhỏ bởi vì mục đích là nhân rộng cái mô hình như thế này chứ không phải là có một cái uh, hoạt động sản xuất kinh doanh tập trung lớn Besides reducing the, trans the need for transport and the transport cost, it also gives us the opportunity to have locals, local either waste managers, local waste operators, local recyclers, local furniture makers, actually operate this activity. Uh, bên cạnh cái việc sẽ giảm thiểu được cái việc phải vận chuyển thì cái uh, việc có những cái uh, địa điểm nhỏ như thế này cũng sẽ làm tăng cái sự tham gia của cái khối địa phương uh, từ uh, những người mà quản lý uh, quản lý rác thải hoặc là những người mà uh, những cái bên đơn vị sản xuất uh, đồ uh, uh, đồ nội thất and as a local they understand much better the local feedstock so what we are doing in the pilot facility is we are generating the feedstock. We are creating our own feedstock. Uh, we are the ones recovering it in collaboration with the informal waste workers. And that's very important to us. And not only with the informal waste workers, but also more and more with local businesses and schools. And we have school recovery programs where we're educating, and we heard a lot about education today, we're educating the students and the students go to their parents and the students educate the parents so now the schools are coming back to us and ask if we can open the program and if we can collect more so that they would actually allow the parents and the teachers to bring the waste to the schools a program we want now want to roll out all throughout Hoi An and on top of that businesses see that we're doing with school schools so they are asking for the solution so it's a self-serving a beautiful mechanism that, that really goes iterative and that's better served by local operators than us. Uh, và cái việc quan trọng đấy là uh, khi mà làm việc với các cái uh, khi làm việc với cái uh, khu vực kinh, nền kinh tế địa phương như thế thì nó sẽ uh, khuyến khích sự tham gia của tất cả các cái uh, thành phần địa phương uh, hiện nay thì chúng tôi đang làm việc với lại cái khu vực uh, những cái người uh, công nhân nhặt rác uh, công nhân nhặt rác mà phi chính tức là uh, người hoạt động uh, trong ngành rác thải phi chính thống thì khi, khi mà họ nhìn thấy những cái uh, hoạt động như thế này thì họ sẽ được khuyến khích tham gia uh, ở hôm nay cũng đã nghe rất nhiều báo cáo liên quan đến việc uh, nâng cao nhận thức uh, thông qua cái việc làm việc với các cái trường học thì đây là cũng là một cái chương trình mà chúng tôi đang thực hiện ở Hội An uh, các cái trường học họ tự uh, xây dựng các cái chương trình uh, để mà phân loại rác thải tại trường, tại trường và chính các em học sinh là người sẽ tác động ngược lại đối với cha mẹ và mang cái rác đó đến trường học và từ trường học thì nó sẽ lan tỏa ra các cái doanh nghiệp. A second recovery mechanism is just launching now and a few of you were um, had the chance to, to visit today the material recovery facility we built in Hoi An. And the operating model is very, very simple. We don't have any money, so it has to be simple and it has to be very low cost. The way we operate these material recovery facilities, first of all, we are, we are building them from 
the non-recyclable plastic. So we're building them from reform boards. And then the operators are actually the informal waste workers. We only take the non-recyclable plastic waste. And the informal waste worker can keep all of the recyclables, and that is high enough for them to keep the entire facility clean, to justify the transport to our facility, and then trade the rest with local recyclers. A beautiful model that we have already seen pick up, even though we haven't officially launched yet. Win-win, that's it. Uh, có một cái cách thức khác mà chúng tôi cũng muốn giới thiệu ngày hôm nay đấy là uh, những cái cơ sở phục hồi nguyên liệu. Uh, thực ra đây là cũng có một số đại biểu đã được uh, tham quan cái cơ sở mà chúng tôi có ở Hội An vào buổi sáng. Uh, bởi vì là một cơ, một đơn vị nhỏ cho nên chúng tôi không có tiền để mà xây dựng những cái hoành tráng. Uh, cho nên là cần phải giữ cái việc vận hành những cái cơ sở nguyên liệu này, uh, những cái cơ sở phục hồi tài nguyên này một cách mà đơn giản nhất có thể. Uh, khi mà uh, cái nhà này được xây thì nhà nó được xây dựa trên cả, uh, sử dụng các cái nguyên liệu uh, tái chế của chính chúng tôi sản xuất ra và những cái người mà uh, vận hành giữ cái nhà này được sạch sẽ phải chính là những người uh, ve chai những người mà nhặt rác không chính thống để mà họ có mà họ thực sự là sẽ có cái uh, lợi ích khi mà họ tham gia vào việc vận hành cái nhà phục hồi nguyên liệu này, đấy là họ sẽ được phép tiếp cận với cái nguồn nguyên liệu mà có giá trị cũng được uh, thu gom ngay tại đây và cái giá trị đó nó phải đảm bảo uh, đủ lớn cho họ để họ có thể tiếp tục tham gia và giữ gìn cái nhà này một cách sạch sẽ, sạch đẹp. There's one more reason why this is essential for Da Nang and that is um Number one, the integration of informal workers. I haven't heard that much about. I've heard it from CCBO as a target. Um, but I haven't heard any, anything really put into action. We've heard the women's union interventions. Um, but the informal waste workers right now are the only ones that actually do contribute to the recycling. Uh, but they... Okay, go ahead. Và đó cũng là một cái cách thức mà chúng tôi đang muốn là làm sao có thể đẩy mạnh và ở Đà Nẵng nên có cái sự tham gia của cái khối lao động nhà giác phi chính thống. Hôm nay cũng đã nghe nhiều báo cáo nhưng cũng chưa có nhiều cái ý kiến để mà có thể đẩy mạnh cái sự tham gia của cái khu vực này vào trong hệ thống quản lý rác thải. Chúng tôi mới chỉ được nghe từ phía bên dự án CCBO của USAID à, có một số những cái ý kiến mà đưa cái sự tham gia của hội phụ nữ, đoàn thể hội phụ nữ vào trong cái hoạt động à, quản lý rác thải. This model doesn't come from us. This model comes from Da Nang City, not from any organization, but from informal waste workers. And we had the pleasure to work with UNDP on an informal waste workers study. Within that study, We actually came across a symbiotic relationship between workers from Durenko and informal waste workers. The Durenko workers are extremely busy and they don't have time to keep the corner places with 10 or 15 different bins very clean. You all know those places, you often see fires, you see leakage. And they had a symbiotic relationship in, in terms of The local informal waste worker was keeping the place clean, was preparing the bin at the time that Durenko would come and pick up. And in return, they just were granted the first right to pick those bins. This is better. This is clean. Một cái mô hình mà chúng tôi đã thấy một cái một cách rất là rõ ràng đấy là nhờ vào cái hoa nhờ vào cái nghiên cứu chúng tôi đã làm cho UNDP cách đây một năm đó là cái mối quan hệ cộng sinh giữa khối nhà giác phi chính thức với lại những với khối công nhân chính thức từ phía công ty công ty công, công trình công ty môi trường đô thị của Đà Nẵng đó là những cái người nhặt rác 
họ sẽ cùng hỗ trợ với lại cái công nhân của công ty uh, môi trường đô thị để uh, gọn uh, lo uh, rửa và uh, giữ cho những cái khu vực Uh, những cái điểm tập kết rác được sạch sẽ đổi lại thì những cái người công nhân này được phép tiếp cận với lại cái xe rác uh, đầu tiên khi mà cái nguồn nguyên liệu này nó mới đến cái điểm tập kết đó. So I think I talked enough about reform, but please keep in mind that we have existing infrastructure that we need to use before we increase anything else or before we engage in anything else. But that does not mean that we don't need more infrastructure. We hear a lot about education, awareness raising, but without infrastructure, we will always fail. Because one thing that we learned from Charm Island was people are very, very willing to separate. But if they see the cities put it back into the same landfill, we're losing five, 10, 15 years because the second time, to convince them a second time is gonna be so much harder. So we need to have the infrastructure in place before we start encouraging them to separate. À, đấy là những cái điều chúng tôi mà tôi muốn nói về reform uh, trước khi chuyển sang dự án khác. Uh, đấy là trên thực tế là chúng ta nên cố gắng làm việc với những với cơ sở vật chất hiện đã sẵn có. Uh, nói như thế không có nghĩa là chúng ta sẽ không uh, không làm không cố gắng để mà cải thiện cái cơ sở hạ tầng. Tuy nhiên thì cần phải có một cái cơ sở hạ tầng mà nó đáp ứng được cho cái hoạt động phân loại rác. Uh, chúng tôi đã thấy cái sự thực này ở Cù Lao Tràm khi mà người dân họ uh, nhìn thấy là cái cái nỗ lực để phân loại của họ uh, cuối cùng nếu nếu mà nó đi về chung một cái uh, bãi chôn lấp thì sẽ mất rất là nhiều thời gian để có thể tập huấn lại để hỗ trợ lại họ thực hiện có cái hành vi mà phân loại rác từ đầu. Really short. Uh, I know I'm running out of time, but please let me introduce Glass here to you, and you may see some similarities on this side um, with the Songdon drum and um, on our side. But please look at the logos. We changed the very traditional um, symbol to not only life in Vietnam, but life above and below water. Because this is a, an upstream intervention. So we are reducing plastic waste before we have to clean it up. So we're looking at things from both sides, right? Um, and again, this is an ocean plastics project uh, funded by IDH um, in the conceptualization. And we just opened the first facility here in Da Nang. Please go to um, Indochina Mall, have a look at it. Everything is fully transparent behind glass, yeah? fully certified, so that we have no complaints or no hurdles to switch from plastic to glass. And the best thing is, it's the same price as plastic. Uh, một cái uh, dự án khác đó là dự án Glacia. Uh, các anh chị có thể nhìn thấy ở bên góc uh, của hội trường uh, sẽ rất là quen thuộc của cái logo của chúng tôi lấy cái cảm hứng từ trống đồng Đông Sơn uh, nhưng có thay đổi một uh, một ít đó là cái chi tiết uh, uh, có cả cái cuộc sống ở trên cạn cũng như cuộc sống ở dưới nước. Uh, và cái uh, cảm hứng của chúng tôi đấy là uh, chúng ta cần ngoại trừ cái, cái những cái giải pháp để giải quyết cái rác thải nhựa sau khi mà đã uh, sản xuất ra cái loại rác thải nhựa đó rồi thì chúng ta cũng cần những cái giải pháp mà trước thậm chí nó còn ngăn chặn cả cái việc sản xuất ra cái loại rác thải nhựa đó thì uh, đây là một cái dự án mà chúng tôi đã được tài trợ bởi uh, IDH uh, và mới mở cái cơ sở đầu tiên tại uh, trung tâm thương mại Indochina uh, và quý vị có thể đến thăm cái cơ sở này mọi thứ hoàn toàn rất là minh bạch và có thể nhìn được hoàn toàn cái hoạt động của uh, sản xuất từ bên ngoài cửa kính uh, đấy là cái uh, vẻ đẹp của cái mô hình này và đặc biệt là cái giá thành của cái sản phẩm thì ngang bằng so với lại uh, chai nhựa Enough of me Please support the environment just by continue to drink water, just by switching. Just switch to glass. These bottles are uh, refillable up to 50 times. Yeah? So the environmental footprint is significantly better, and that's all we want to encourage. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
những cái điều cuối cùng đấy là uh, rất là mong muốn tất cả quý vị ở đây chúng ta cùng có thể chuyển đổi cái việc sử dụng chai nhựa sang chai thủy tinh một chai thủy tinh như thế này có thể tái sử dụng lại đến 50 lần và giảm cái dấu chân carbon rất là nhiều xin cảm ơn Thank you for a very beautiful presentations that we have a chance to see green left. Now we will have two presentations left. It's from Dr. Pham Ngoc Bao from EGAS and Mr. Quak Tisun on the Say No to Yes, Vietnam Zero Waste Island. So, Dr. Pham Ngoc Bao, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Vâng, xin chào mọi người. Không uh, rõ quý vị có nghe uh, được tôi is, không? Uh, yes, good afternoon. My name is Pham Ngoc Bao. Uh, I'm vâng, from the Institute for Global Bao. Environmental Strategy, IGS, based in Japan. Vâng, Viện Chiến lược Môi trường Toàn cầu Nhật Bản. So, um, first on behalf of the team, I'd like to thank the uh, organizer for coming to this interesting event. Tôi xin được cảm ơn ban tổ chức đã tổ chức hội thảo thú vị này cho chúng tôi cơ hội được chương trình tại Đà Nẵng. So today, like to share with you some Hôm nay tôi xin chia sẻ một số uh, một công việc chúng tôi hiện đang làm phối hợp cùng với in Sở Tài nguyên Môi trường Đà Nẵng về uh, to tackle, uh, kế hoạch hành động của thành phố with a vision to 2030. đến năm 2025 tầm nhìn 2030. So the name of our project is uh, Closing the Loop. And um, the major goal is to support the ASEAN city to address the plastic waste pollution entering the marine environment uh, through the introductions of uh, innovations and smart technology uh, to monitor, to access, and to sustainable manage plastic waste. We uh, also support the city in uh, develop the city action plan, uh, which include the uh, uh, policy and investment strategy, uh, which utilize the circular economy model uh, to manage the plastic. So um, under this project, uh, four pilot uh, city has been selected, uh, including Dana City of Vietnam, uh, Surabaya uh, City of Indonesia, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, and uh, Nakhon Si Thamarat in Thailand. So um, this is our approach under our projects. Uh, first, uh, we um, uh, from a kind of uh, team, including the local uh, team together with the international team and work very closely uh, with the Da Nang uh, Department of Natural Resort and Environment to carry out a bayline investigations, which is very important uh, uh, as a foundation to before we develop the city action plan. So this bayline investigation, including the um, review of the current uh, policy institutional frameworks um, uh, on the plastic waste management in Dana City and also uh, to develop a, a using the material flow analysis method uh, to quantify the plastic flows in Dana cities and what kind of uh, where the sort of plastic pollution where it's going and so on in the second component we utilize the digital mapping tool uh, like such as uh, using the satellite data remote sensing drone uh, and crowdsource data in order to uh, to track the the hotspot and also in order to uh, identify the plastic leakage uh, in Dana city uh, where it's going uh, where it's go to river go to uh, the ocean and so on and how it's moved what is the phase of the plastic and so on and based on the outcome from the bayline investigations um, digital mapping um, uh, tool uh, we uh, we develop the we work with the partner um, don't pay and also the uh, working group consists of uh, experts uh, from different area to uh, develop the city action plan, which include the policy at, as well as uh, uh, investment strategy to tackle the marine uh, plastic issue in the future. Yeah. In addition to that, we also uh, gonna organize some kind of uh, e-learning course. Uh, for improve the capacity building uh, for the local government official and also the relevant stakeholder in Dana City. 
And uh, we, we, we hope that uh, this uh, uh, activity and this work will also uh, contribute to the, uh, the National Action Plan of Vietnam uh, for the measurement of marine plastic litter by the year 2030 by uh, providing a kind of uh, data driven and scientific evidence based uh, action plan you know, to tackle plastic waste in the Danang city. And also under this project, we hope to foster the international relations and uh, corporations uh, uh, between the local government and also the uh, a variety of uh, partners uh, to tackle the, the, the plastic waste uh, after the development of the action plan. So we utilize the stepwise approach uh, for, for, for the city action planning, uh, including the six steps um, uh, from the bay lines, uh, from the um, action plan frame, framings, uh, framework uh, development, and also uh, identify and evaluate the option and so on. Um, so um, not only uh, IGS, but also um, UN Escape, uh, IUCN, and Japan Space System is our, our key uh, partner under this project. Um, this project is uh, financed by the government of Japan. Uh, so we also uh, work with various uh, other partners, uh, including the UC of Lead and so on, uh, in order to uh, provide the technical support uh, for, for the bayline investigations, as well as uh, action planning. Uh, so this is a timeline for the, our, uh, our works um, uh, action planning. Um, in, in the first quarter of the year 2031, we, uh, we are expected to, to launch the, the, the Bayline's uh, report uh, very soon. Uh, we already um, organized the inception workshop with Danang City, and soon we'll uh, also launch the e-learning course uh, for, the, uh, for the pilot city, uh, including Danang City. And uh, we expect that uh, the, draft, uh, the first uh, draft of action plan will be submitted to the Danang City government uh, by the second quarter of the of this year and so on. So, and hopefully um, uh, we can st uh, start to launch the, the city action plan by the third quarter uh, of the year, yeah. And so this is a study that we conduct uh, for the action plan development. Uh, we work with the UC of Leeds in UK uh, to utilize the plastic pollution calculator in order to visualize, in order to understand the plastic flow in the Dana city. So a lot of data has been uh, has been used as input for this model. Um, in addition to that, we also conduct a kind of very in-depth uh, review uh, to understand the different governance aspect, uh, including the policy uh, regulations, the digital readiness uh, and capacity, uh, financial sustainability, and um, institutional capacity, and so on. Uh, we also um, using the uh, digital tool uh, and mapping tool to understand the plastic leakage and also the hotspot. And uh, we are now uh, forming uh, a kind of um, technical working group, uh, which including the very um, uh, variety of experts in the field, including from Danang City and also international experts to contribute to the um, finalize uh, the draft action plans. And this is a, this is a kind of very brief explain, explanation about the uh, plastic population calculator, where we uh, try to uh, quantify the relationship between all uh, key components of the plastic weight uh, value chains. So we use a lot of data, including the social economics, uh, hydrological geographics data, and so on, in order to support uh, for the, uh, for modeling the plastic flow. And uh, in addition to the sec uh, uh, secondary data, we also collect the primary data uh, as input for the, for the model. Uh, so we take the, 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 the uh, waste sample uh, from uh, five major waste source uh, and also uh, 11 sub plastic waste category. Uh, totally, we, have, uh, we take all around uh, 115 sample uh, across the city. Uh, at, uh, also at, uh, based on the land use and also at the different uh, district level and so on in order to understand the composition of the plastic. And uh, this is a kind of very brief uh, outcome result from the modeling. We, we found that uh, it's about uh, 80,000 tons of plastic waste as produced uh, per year in Danang City. And uh, major majority of uh, plastic waste is a uh, plastic bag. Actually, it's account for uh, more than 48%. And uh, the other 18% uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, other plastic film. Uh, so it's making soft plastic uh, as a high priorities. 
and also um, uh, um, food uh, and uh, packaging related plastic also account for a lot percent, like 40 percent, uh, followed by uh, butter, like fat butter, and so on. Uh, so uh, commercial waste is in particular has very uh, high amount of uh, its plastic waste stream. Uh, also include the plastic bag and uh, plastic frame and so on. So this kind of commercial waste is uh, mainly from uh, restaurant, uh, hotel, uh, market, and so on. Yeah. And so on the left uh, hand, you can see that this kind of uh, the amount of plastic uh, emission uh, to the environment uh, by the year uh, per year by the district uh, district level. Uh, so we also uh, investigate the plastic waste item composition. You can just see here that uh, I mentioned in the previous slide. That's a uh, plastic bag seen uh, domain dominating, um, followed by the other plastic firm. We also investigate the plastic composition by uh, by land use or uh, by uh, different detailed activity like from single family dwell office um, uh, from food and drinks uh, service and so on. Also, uh, plastic bag is quite dominating in all activities, as we, we saw here. Um, we also investigate um, what, what, kind of, uh, what is the composition of plastic waste uh, entering the waterways, including the river and ocean, and so on. So we also found that uh, the plastic bag is still, uh, very, uh, is still dominating, uh, followed by the other plastic firm and uh, bottle, fat bottle, and so on. And um, we also uh, simulate uh, and understand the plastic waste pathway, and we found that uh, about 85% um, of the plastic is still retained in the, in the landfill, especially the low quality uh, low quality plastic. Um, and around 6.2% uh, uh, has been uh, recycled, uh, mainly it's a pet bottle. And uh, it's around 1.3% uh, of, the, of the plastic waste has been um, dumped to the uh, to the auctions. Has been uh, flowed to the auctions. So uh, you can see here this figure. So uh, you may learn more details uh, information from our Bayline uh, report, uh, which will be launched uh, hopefully by uh, the end of uh, this month. So uh, based on the um, the result from the Bayline investigation, we are now uh, discussing uh, with the Dondre and also. Um, uh, expert in a working group, uh, you know, to set uh, up the, the visions, the priority area, and also uh, specific targets uh, for the city action plan. So this is a kind of important factor that we need to consider, uh, uh, including the the current visions uh, uh, in 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 the in the uh, mentioned in the strategy for sustainable development of Vietnam marine economy to the year 2030, and also the uh, the visions uh, for Da Nang City. Uh, set up in the uh, in the master plan for social economic development of Danang City uh, toward 2020 and with a vision uh, 2030. This is a kind of, uh, important uh, factor that we need to consider. And uh, regarding to the priority area, we um, in addition to the priority area as mentioned in the action plan, we also consider the priority area as identified under the ASEAN framework of actions on. Uh, marine debris, which include in the five, uh, four uh, major uh, area, uh, including the policy, research, innovations, uh, capacity, uh, public awareness, and uh, private sector investment. And also uh, in IGS, we also conduct a very um, large scale study uh, in ASEAN uh, city, ASEAN country, in order to identify the existing gap in, in the plastic uh, uh, management uh, including Vietnam, so we identify four major gaps uh, in, in terms of the information and knowledge, uh, policy, governance, technical capacity, uh, markets, and financial. So this is the kind of factor that we will uh, all consider in, uh, in, uh, in ongoing discussion uh, regarding to the uh, city action plan, the city action plan. Uh, in addition to that, we also, of course, we have to consider the, the targets uh, has been setting, has set, has set up uh, under the National action plan uh, by the year 2025 and uh, with the vision 2030. In addition to that, uh, Danang City also um, already uh, proposed a, a, a variety of uh, targets under different strategy. For, for example, like under the Danang City uh, solid waste treatment planning uh, until 2030, or under the 
Da Nang City uh, action plan on the implementation of waste segregation as sought or uh, the upcoming um, uh, which has been uh, which has been recently approved is a 10 year implementer city framework uh, and so on. So this kind uh, of Dr. Um, Bảo, Dr. Bảo, yeah, could you yeah. please soon finish your presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Because of time limit, I'm very sorry. Yeah. yeah. So this is a kind of factor that we will consider. So we are now discussing with the team and with the city to set up the specific targets uh, for the year 2025 and uh, with the vision 2030. So uh, so that is all from my uh, talk today. So here are just a few pictures that we text during the baseline investigation. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I would like to ask Dr. Marianne and me and Mr. Wong Chiong to host the discussion session. Hello, Marianne. Marianne, Hello. are you there? I'm yes. here. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. So I'm ready. Shall we be at the discussion? Okay. That's fine. Um, since I'm online, well, first of all, I would like to say uh, hello to everyone. Very nice to uh, participate in the, this important stakeholder workshop. Though, as uh, my colleagues from uh, NIVA has already expressed, we would very much like to have been with you in Da Nang City, of course. Um, since I'm online, I am not able to actually see who potentially raised their hands. So. Um, but I can um, ask some questions and uh, I will first start uh, by asking if there are any that would like to comment on the presentations that you have heard so far. And then I will uh, have to ask someone present in the room to actually share and give the word to those that may comment. While you are thinking, I would like to um, um, comment on the one uh, topic uh, myself. And um, during the presentations, um, which has been very interesting, I would say, uh, we have um, uh, seen that there is um, a lot of activities and initiatives going on, but we have also uh, several times heard that there is still information uh, and knowledge gaps uh, that need to be filled, information that we are lacking and knowledge gaps that need to be filled. And um, the question is, uh, if we have the data and knowledge uh, that we need to understand fully and to solve the problem, and I'm also then thinking of uh, information and knowledge about uh, the baseline of abundance of plastics in the environment. This uh, has not yet been addressed during this uh, workshop. Um, and I would like to hear if someone has comment on this, uh, the quality of baseline, uh, the status of baseline, and if we have the information that we need. So if anyone, either of the presenters or someone in the audience would like to comment on this, feel free. So it doesn't seem like there is any comment to this question about the baseline for understanding the full uh, the problem as such. Could I please ask my co-chairs to um, to comment on this, if there are any in the vâng audience xin. that have a comment. Vâng, xin hỏi có trong hội đồng, trong hội trường hôm nay chúng ta có ai có ý kiến gì về nghiên cứu cơ sở của chúng tôi về những cái khoảng trống trong cái việc xây dựng thành lập kế hoạch hành động của thành phố không ạ? Có 
comment. We have a comment. Yes, please. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, from our side here yeah. on, uh, in Norway, <laughs> we cannot hear your comment. And if it is uh, a non-English comment, we would kindly request some translation as well. Yeah, there's an interpreter, I think. I'd like to comment in Vietnamese so the trans can be translated. So about the uh, the reports in Vietnam and in Da Nang, currently the data about the waste, especially the compositions of so um, plastic waste, as you have known that it will take really about seven consecutive days, and we have to follow based on the seasons, or in different sources. So in order to have such a comprehensive report for a city rather big city like Da Nang, it would take a lot of time and resources. However, the resources from the projects currently has not been sufficient. So I think that the data that we have now from WWF, UNDP or IGES, UNSCAP, UNCO of Da Nang, or the uh, department's data has not been really put together. And the research in Da Nang as to in the half year to come with the uh, online uh, meetings, that way we can meet together to see the difference. So that is very important that we have a base data. So we as a city or as a researcher that I would hope that organizations can you can we stay in dialogue together to find out and share more information and results. So that not only when the project is implementing for such as Dr. Bao has mentioned about the methods, a very modern one. However, we need to see about the capacity of the system. Can we, can they use such modern approach? Or would we just use a, um, a more an ordinary one or more suitable one so that the authority could uh, use them after the project is done? Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's uh, very uh, important what you say that um, one also one of the aspects for the ASEANO project is to to share and to build upon the knowledge that is already uh, gathered and uh, present in the area. So to get this overview and to share uh, and uh, as I say, continue working um, in um, coordination with actors in the area is, of course, extremely important.
any comments that would uh, from someone that would like to um, to elaborate more on this topic. We have uh, one more comment. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. It's actually two questions. I think it's is based on the experience that has been proven and secondly the UNDP projects uh, that focus on the scrap pickers that they play an important role my question is this First of all, maybe I didn't get the first part in your project. As you have mentioned, there is a gap in infrastructures and how do you support the scrap worker? How do you support them to universalize or extend how did you make them their work effective? How do you support the stakeholders? The scrap pickers and the scrap purchase units. Excuse me, could I please ask who this question is addressed? To? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Duke from the uh, uh, Norwegian Embassy, and he's having a question for Green Lab. So, I think I get the question, but uh, please correct me if uh, if I go in the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> uh, so, one is on infrastructure and funding. Okay, so we started self-funded for three years. So the experimentation, we have the different approaches. The experimentation, we fund completely by ourselves and then we start slowly fundraising once we know, because we wanna be responsible with development funds. Once we know we have something, we start maybe getting a little bit of help. And ADB was actually one of the very early, ADB uh, very early on just on R&D, $5,000. That's how it all happened. Before we probably spent uh, a multitude of that just on R&D work. Yeah? And as we progress, we get a little bit more encouraged to uh, take on additional funding. Um, but we always match. Yeah. We, we don't believe in just everything should be given for free. We need, a, we need to have a share in this. So we, um, we eventually got 50% of the funding from IUCN, and that was very much linked to Chum Island for an ocean project for the protected area because there's a lot of plastic leakage even actually from the landfill. So that's how we how we started eventually having the factory. But it was very iterative, step by step. And now we are in a, in a position where we want to open the next 10 reform facilities. So we are now fundraising for the next 10, not for one facility at a time because it's way too expensive in terms of uh, time and, and due diligence work. Chào anh Tiên Dịch, uh, em xin phép dịch cái câu trả lời vừa rồi của anh Gian ạ. Đấy là cái uh, hoạt động của reform từ ban đầu uh, được phát triển bằng cái nguồn uh, nguồn tiền 
thứ nhất là tự bỏ tiền của tổ chức nhưng đồng thời cũng nhận được một số những cái khoản tài trợ nho nhỏ của các cái đơn vị khác nhau À, một trong những cái khoản tiền đầu tiên để dự án reform bắt đầu đấy là từ đến từ ngân hàng phát triển châu Á với cái khoản cũng chỉ khoảng tầm 5 ngàn đô à, và cứ từ đó thì cũng thi thoảng có nhận được những cái nguồn tài trợ như thế và à, bên uh, Evergreen Latin vào cái việc là cái nguồn mass funding như thế nó sẽ uh, khiến cho cái đối tượng mà nhận cái nguồn tài trợ đó có cái trách nhiệm hơn chứ không phải tất cả mọi mọi cái hoạt động sẽ chỉ có phụ thuộc vào một trăm phần trăm các cái nguồn tài trợ ở các cái dự án phát phát triển à, và sau khi đã phát triển được thành một cái mô hình thì bên chúng tôi mới nhận được khoảng tầm 50 phần trăm trong cái tổng tiền à, để phát triển dự án từ à, một cái dự án của bên tổ chức IUCN à, cái dự án này là tài trợ để thực hiện dự án tại Cù Lao Tràm và nó liên kết với lại cái nhà máy ở Hội An và như vậy ạ and I'm reading how can we scale it how can it how can it benefit anyone Right? Because our vision is to have it, yes, yes. So the model was designed to be very decentralized. Uh, we offer it in two ways. One is a plug-in to development uh, programs. That's going to be a big one. Um, but an even bigger one is integrating the facility itself or the approach, the technology, into any waste operation because the material is never really addressed and the material is always abundant. It's always available. So we now have um, MOUs signed with municipal operators, with existing recyclers, even with incinerators. And that I get very excited about because even the incinerators do not want to burn the plastic. Yeah, it has a calorific value and there's a, a good reason why they're burning plastic, but they know that it's not good for the environment. And none of the incinerators in Vietnam are profitable. So everything they don't need to burn and can monetize on is actually good for them. They just don't have a battery solution. So we are getting approached by incinerator operators to go side by side next to the incinerator because they have enough feedstock. And that shows not only that the product works, but it also shows that the approach works. And with only $100,000 for a thousand ton per year production capacity, we're actually also the cheapest option to properly treat waste. Even a landfill operation would be around the same value. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then um, I would... Um, as, um, as the final uh, question in this uh, discussion, I would just like to ask my co-chairs if they have any last comments before I uh, summarize the workshop. Uh, uh, thank you. May I have uh, some comment? Uh, firstly, uh, I uh, would like to have a question to the Evergreen. Uh, I'm concerning about the um, secondary pollution, but I think we can discuss about it later because maybe it's, it will take time about it. I would like to have two comments to the NIVA. Firstly, uh, if uh, we are talking about the data, uh, about the background, data and information, and we are also talking about the fund. So if, firstly, if the now we say can take lead to mobilize the fund, to uh, organize this uh, activity. And uh, the second one is um, uh, if we need to, um, uh, to have more research so that we can get the, uh, the information or the data. And basing on it, we can develop the uh, plan, the act, uh, um, action plan not only for the Đà Nẵng, or maybe we can uh, use for, apply for another city as well. So, um, yes, it is my comment. So do you have um, any suggestion for this? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
I um, would like to call for uh, Dr. Marianne Carson, as you have noticed, there are two Marianne in Maniva, and also uh, Mr. Arisman may comment on the question or the comment related to the ASEAN project. Yes, please, Arisman. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Marianne Olsen. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, to respond to your comment, actually our project uh, uh, in the first phase is try to look at uh, site selection. And that's why like Indonesia, we choose only one city uh, in uh, Bandung, the same like in Philippines. That's why uh, based on our uh, discussion with ASEAN Secretariat and then uh, Danang is one of the option. And as, we, as far as we know that also many initiative uh, project in Danang uh, with WWF as well as UNDP is also supported uh, by Norway. That's why we, one of our project component, we have to synergy with other project. So yeah, for the research opportunity, of course, after this, we can discuss uh, what kind of data need by uh, local government so we can collaborate to do research activities. Maybe Dr. Marian Carson can add. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Dr. Alisman. Yes, I would also like to, uh, I agree, and I would like to add to what Arisman just said, that I think it's important to, first of all, establish, uh, like you mentioned, uh, what kind of data that exists to compile uh, from the projects that have already done a lot of activities and see where ASEAN can contribute the most. And then after that, we can make a more detailed plan on how to establish synergies and work with you in this region. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Then uh, I would like to start to summarize uh, this workshop uh, before I give some, uh, I'll try to come up with a, some kind of conclusion. And uh, then I know there are also uh, some closing remarks on the agenda. Uh, oh, we have uh, one more comment. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Hill, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a comment. So thank you for your comments about the international corporations or policies of Vietnam in general, uh, in the Monterey and Vasi in particular. So until now, according to the World Bank's calculation, there have been 53 projects that focus on the marine plastic debris in Vietnam. So the problem is these 53 projects come from different sources of sponsor, so have different standards, different objective for the marine plastic debris investigation. So you see that the data is not uniform. So as we have seen here, that so in the northern region is focusing only a few city, but the other cities have not been invested. In the middle region, mostly focused on Da Nang, or in the southern regions, we lack. So that is the problem that we're seeing today. And the third problem is who will use the data? what to believe and what is right so that the organizations nowadays they use USA, Japan, UN Habitat standards. So our problem is for management is what we are facing up with today. SCCBO have just, so a new organization coming into Vietnam. So they have to find out, figure out what to invest and where and why. So that has been a puzzle for our administrations, a focal point on policies of marine management. So you see here that, that with the ambassadors, deputy directors and deputy director general here, you've known too well about this. So from my institute. In the coming time, we will be on 
policies and legal. And we will build a, an international marine plastic waste research centers. We will accompany with you, such as CCBO. We will come with you when you go to Vietnam. We'll help you to see what to invest and how to do that so that you can maximize the benefits to the societies. And these centers will be the focal points of Vietnam. Because it's very hard to figure out and you very hard to say that there is a right data. We do not have actually a concrete evidence or anything we say about the merit plastic waste debris in Vietnam. So in the coming time, we will have concrete evidence. And in 2021, we will we'll build the regulations. So currently we have like a, a couple of international regulations on uh, surveys and assessment. So in 2021, We'll have a set of regulations for Vietnamese projects, but so it's, it's actually a source of reference for sponsor to use Vietnamese regulations for investment uh, and in investigations of marine plastic debris in Vietnam. This is what we are going, we're building and what we are going to implement in the near future. And another problem. You say that mostly mm, projects uh, on marine plastic debris in Vietnam is uh, in from international fund, but not anything from the state budget because we lack of regulations. We have not have any ground for the investment from state budget. In the near future, the Vietnam administrations of Sea and Islands, we will build this as a focal point. Yes, on the behalf of the Deputy Director General, we we'll, we we'll give you thanks for your support. Actually, there has not been any regulation, any standard. You have already given us support, given aids and grants. We appreciate your support and we do hope that in the near future the Vietnam administrations of CN Islands will join hand with sponsors to become a lead for sponsors for the good source of information so that we could contribute more in 2022 we could have Marine plastic debris analysis. Most recently, we have been supported by Japan government for investigation and analysis of marine plastic debris. So that in the future, Vietnam could have a clear statement of what is really happening with marine plastic debris in Vietnam. That has been my point and comments with ambassadors, researchers, and officials on the National Action Plan of uh, Vietnam thank you, Mr. so that we have a better Professor future. Hiu. So now we move to closing remarks. Uh, we move to the conclusion. So I would like to invite Dr. Mariana Ors have a conclusion. Thank you. Maria Nelson, you still unmute? Sorry. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, so thank you for that. I will try to give a brief uh, conclusion after this very interesting stakeholder workshop and uh, also some very valuable and important comments during the discussion. So, um, to my knowledge, there has been um, 
14 present online and 30, uh, 30 per uh, participants present in Danang City. And um, we have um, had uh, participants um, covering uh, from, from uh, um, the ambassadors, officials, NGOs, universities, institutes, uh, plastic organizations, and also other stakeholders. And uh, the workshop was um, opened with the remarks from um, from Ambassador Greta Lökken and also uh, from Mr. Young. I'm sorry if I pronounce your names wrong, but I will try my best. Mr. Ningen uh, Kulan and also uh, Dr. Turian Larsen from uh, from Niva. Um, Dr. Maram Carson from uh, Niva presented the project together with uh, Arisman from CCS. And then in session one, we uh, heard presentations on the policy and existing program to reduce plastic pollution and its impact in the city. Um, so Dr. Nang, Dr. Hong Nguyen opened session one talking about the overall policy uh, on plastic waste management in Vietnam and uh, gave information about both resolutions Back from 2018, the National Action Plan for Ocean Plastic Management up to 2030, uh, giving tools for plastic management, and also the proposal for, in, for an international center for ocean plastic uh, waste. Um, then, uh, Mrs. Nguyen T. Kim Ha reported on the combating plastic debris movement in Danang City involving local stakeholders. Um, so um, then we moved into the uh, presentation from Mr. Wang Tan Yin from uh, UNDP Vietnam, uh, who presented to us the initiative uh, or the innovative approach to combat marine plastic pollution in Vietnam. This includes to deliver policy advisory involvement and implement multi-level actions and several programs involving stakeholders and sectors were presented. The USAID's flagship program for combating ocean plastic pollution, the CCBO, uh, was presented uh, by Mrs. Dong Bing. And, um, this program implement local solutions by addressing weak policy frameworks and inadequate service deliveries with five defined activities in Vietnam that was presented. After the break, we went into session two and uh, Mrs. Trang Dugian gave an introduction to the WWF's international program Plastic Smart Cities, which includes several cities in Vietnam. This was followed by Mr. Letrung Min Tan, who reported on specific efforts to reduce plastic waste in Tanke district in Danang city, working with local uh, inhabitants, businesses, and other stakeholders, and uh, in particular, fishermen were um, uh, discussed. Then Dr. Long Tuk Dang presented the innovative activities carried out by students in Danang city. Uh, which contributes to reducing plastic waste. Uh, he also proposed to expand the UV invent competitions to engage students in environmental innovative innovation activities, such as uh, yeah, um, uh, to expand these to other locations. Sorry. Then Mr. Jan Sellerman, Sellerman from Evergreen Labs reported on uh, their activities to tackle plastic pollution from a social science perspective targeting low value plastic that most often ends up as waste and uh, uh, through their initiative reform, um, this plastic is, uh, they aim at give this plastic value. This important take home message is that infrastructure must be in place before, before people uh, are encouraged to separate and sort the waste. Then Dr. Bao Nengong Pham represented the project Closing the Loop, aiming at supporting Asian cities to reduce the environmental impact from plastic pollution. The project includes model development and also the development of a plastic pollution calculator based on primary and secondary data. Based on uh, this, I will try to um, come up with uh, some short conclusions. 
So from today's presentations and discussions, we have learned that there are already several and established collaborations in Vietnam aiming at reducing plastic waste and combating marine plastic litter pollution. In particular, the National Action Plan for Ocean Plastic Management gives tools for plastic management. And uh, in Da Nang City, several projects are already implemented or in development to reduce plastic waste and to improve on solid waste management and waste treatment, including waste sorting collection and information to the public. Several initiative, uh, international in initiatives are ongoing, like UNDP's program to combat plastic pollution, USAID's CCBO program, WWF's initiative on plastic smart cities, um, projects running at the University of Danang, Evergreen Labs, and the RHS project, Closing the Loop, they all work in the same direction. Building capacity for improved solid waste management, looking for solutions and involving stakeholders at various levels. Despite all these very important initiatives and actions, there are still knowledge gaps to be filled in order to successfully implement feasible mitigation actions and in order to measure the effects of all actions, both on waste management in value creation and in environmental impact from plastic litter. The ASEANO project aims at improving capacity to tackle plastic pollution and should seek to coordinate activities with these already important and relevant activities. Some of the training activities and courses organized by the project has already been mentioned by Dr. Marianne Carson and Mr. Arsman. Though I would like to inform you about our upcoming online training program on microplastic analysis based on videos and supplementary material available through CC's web page. Tackling plastic pollution needs a comprehensive and holistic knowledge based approach. Measures should be based on an understanding of both socioeconomic aspects and drivers, as well as mapping of sources, identifying hotspots, and monitoring of distribution and abundance of litter in the environment. Despite all the ongoing activities, there is no comprehensive solution or quick fix uh, identified. So this workshop has clearly shown that it is crucial to work together, united towards the same goal, and that is the only way forward. Plastic pollution is a global problem that have received global attention, and the problem must be handled on all scales, as our director, Julia Larsen, from uh, NIVA said uh, early, uh, we need to handle this on all scales, the global, regional, national, and local on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot is done on the, on the local scale. So that's my uh, notes for the conclusion, and I hand the word to the host and the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, allow me to invite the Norwegian ambassadors in Asia to have a closing speech, please. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, thank you for inviting me to this workshop. It's been uh, a very much a learning experience, uh, getting a lot of insight into projects and activities going on in Dalai and Vietnam on the on this uh, very important issue. I especially want to thank the the hosts in Dalai and Vietnam for organizing this, uh, bringing together um, so many stakeholders and. Uh, projects and uh, which is very relevant for the success. I am now very pleased that ASEANO is starting up in Vietnam. Um, and I see a lot of progress that can come out of this and 
uh, with the knowledge and insight we will get from the work in Vietnam, I'm sure that the, that will be of assistance to other communities and countries in ASEAN. And I'm quite confident that this project will fit very well with the existing project and activities, which we have heard about today. Sharing information is a key to success. We can avoid duplication and we can learn from each other and we can build on each other's work. With the Norwegian ASEAN partnership, we want to contribute to knowledge and solutions that can work and be implemented throughout ASEAN. But of course, given the diversity and differences in the communities and countries, but that, that is an, very much a part of ASEAN. The issue of marine littering and also the larger issue of the sustainable development goals continue, will continue to be an important priority for Norway globally but also in particular in our uh, partnership with ASEAN. And we look very much forward to how this project will proceed um, in ASEAN and in Vietnam in particular. And I wish everybody involved success and thank you for having me participate in Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for your attendance in this workshop. So after like four hours of intensive work and lots of information from authority, experts, researchers, Vietnam International alike, our workshop has been a success. As a focal point for the National Action Plan for Marine Plastic Debris Management, the VASI would like to thank the, con uh, the support from the Norwegian support, uh, government organizations, Da Nang Don Re, and with, with the information collected today, we will proceed to realize the policies of Vietnam in the future so that the goal of plastic debris pollution reduction. So let us hope that the plan will soon be f with fruits. May ASEAN projects be successful in Vietnam. May Da Nang City be forever green and livable. May the Vietnam Norwegian Corporation be more and more beautiful. May you have good health. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nguyen Khoi Lam. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to declare the workshop today that is over. Thank you for your cooperation.